Hi, my name is Taiko Nutris, former national 100 meter champion of Jamaica, and you're tuned into Elite Sports TV. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with all of the new and upcoming inf information we have to do with, especially corruption in athletics. And turn on the notification bell to get all of the, the upcoming information that you need. My name is Earl Stevens, former international player and reggae boy, and you're watching Elite Sports TV, Ryan, LFC. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date to get the latest content on the reggae boys football. Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, the Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls Top Midfielder, and you're here on Ryan FC and Elite Sports. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to keep up all to date with Reggae Girls and Reggae Boys Top News. Okay. Hi, this is Yasmin Jameson, Reggae Girls Goalkeeper, and you're watching Ryan LFC's YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Jermaine Clark Jr. here from Bayern Royal Squad 2023. You're watching Elite Sport TV with Ryan LFC. Stay tuned for all things Reggae Girls, Reggae Boys, and Sports. Peace out. Hey guys, Bonnie Shaw here with Elite Sports TV. Make sure you like and subscribe and always tune in. I am Liam Bailey and you are watching Elite Sports TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, no respect. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening to everyone down in the comment section. My name is Ryan LFC. We are back again, guys. I need a top shell video for you guys today. As you guys can see in the title and the thumbnail, we're going to talk about the United States versus Jamaica game, Mexico versus Panama, and also we're going to peep over the fence, look at the Trinidad and Tobago, Canada game for the Copa America. I remember all of these Canadian fans telling us that we're going to play Trinidad. Tia returns, eh? We're going to get into it, people. I have some special guests in the background waiting to come on the show to get all the information all the viewers need. So, people, once you join the stream and you're watching back on the replay, don't forget to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button. But first and foremost, people, we're going to bring our guest. This is Ryan, my another brother from another mother. All right? He's supporting the United States men's national team. The first time on the show. Ryan, good evening. Welcome to the show, my brother. I'm buzzing to be here. First time. Super excited. And it's a huge week in CONCACAF. Lots of games. I can't wait. You beat in Jamaica? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, oh. we're going to have a good time, you know. <laughs> Oh, my God, man. Trust me, you won it two times already. Let's give it to the reggae boys, man. Uh, we are you know, three, three Pete sounds good, brother. Three Pete. Wow. Don't count the egg, you know. Don't be like Ryan from Canada, you know, where he's cussing the referee. It's never Canada dash for the game, but he blamed the referee. But we have Ryan from Canada. Ryan, good evening. Welcome to the show, my brother. I'm, I'm here. How we doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? A bit nervous. Not ready for this one-off. I'm not. I'm not gonna be happy till the final whistle. Or well, I could be. I could be mad about the final whistle, but you know, I'm not gonna feel comfortable until the final whistle blows on Saturday. So, but before that, we got to see y'all fight it out. So, we'll see how that turns. You think USA going to beat us? No, I said y'all got to fight it out. I didn't say the USA was going to Oh, okay, okay. My apology, my apology, my apology, my apology. People, we have three Ryan on the show tonight. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm telling you, I'll be a great people named Ryan, you know. 
So make sure you to give some respect to my guests. But people, I have another special guest. The man himself. They, he call himself the 4 3 3 Press. I wonder why him come by. Why him come by that name? Is it Jurgen Klopp as a United fan stealing Jurgen Klopp pressing? I don't know, man. But let's welcome my another Jamaican brother to the channel. But he's a United fan, but we can live with him. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? People, bless up, bless up, bless up. Um, Listen... Ryan talked about me being a United fan. I didn't steal anything from Liverpool. Liverpool steal from Manchester United. Okay, people. Liverpool steal from United. But no, no my brother. No, my brother. No, my <laughs> brother. Do you know that Liverpool were the first team to wear red? Do you know that? <laughs> I'll, give you know? I'll, give, I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Oh, we are the real reds. Not the fake red devil. But, but who, who, which club is the biggest club in the world out of the two reds? Liverpool. Oh, you wish, you wish. Liverpool is the biggest club right now. Me are the most I, I, successful club in England right now. What what I, what the other random think? For Honestly, me, Liverpool. you you go ahead, <laughs> Canadian Ryan. Canadian Ryan, what we yeah, say? I say Liverpool's bigger than Man United. I Fix would have to problems. say... Fix I, the problems. To be honest, don't like either of them. Find them both annoying. So, I don't think either are big. Oh, my God. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Who do you support, by the way? Which team uh, is... Uh, I support in Tottenham. Tottenham! Oh! <laughs> no, I have a little bit of sympathy on him. I have a little bit of... Yeah. I like Anthony Costa Coglu. Yeah, good. yeah. Good I hope if he, I hope, I would love for him to be the next Liverpool manager. He's a Liverpool fan. <laughs> oh, don't be saying that too loudly, please. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm to Xavi Alonso. Uh, I deserve me. Yeah, Xavi Alonso is a good player, but I just believe that um, Bayern Munich is sniffing, and I think mm -hmm. it's going to be a big shoes to fill for Xavi Alonso coming to Liverpool. Um. The Tottenham manager has been successful when three league tackle in three different country, and him have a style of play that already at Liverpool he's just going to um improve on it and not a manager that's going to rock the board and all of them stuff. There. So I'm not saying that man, but we have we have Tottenham people in the building though. All right. Big up so man. Big up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But first and foremost, people. Uh, we're going to look ahead, people, and speak on the first game that we're going to preview on this show. Canada versus Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago beat the United States away from home. We know that USA record away from home is terrible. But the Canadian team lost to Jamaica in Canada. Right? One of the greatest moments of my um, journey supporting the reggae boys. That is my 98. Right, that's the last time the reggae boys went to the World Cup. But um, Ryan, talk to our talk to talk to me about your new CEO. I hope he's not the next cheeky yard man. But yeah, Kevin Blue, talk to me about your new general secretary for the for the Canadian football though. So Kevin Blue has recently been hired as the general secretary of Canada Soccer. Seems very committed to the cause seems very ready to take up this federation that has a lot of questions around it and trying to keep the, the ship afloat. And Kevin Blue looks like a guy who's tough, a hard worker, somebody who's not going to run from the grind of this, building this federation, trying to keep them pushing forward. Hopefully he has good managers in mind to push this team as a group, hopefully it's not just BLO. Hopefully he's looking around for people such as Bobby Smyrny Otis and other types of managers like that. But right now, I, I like what Kevin Blue is about to prop, prop up for Canada, the ideals that he has and the way he wants to build this federation. So Kevin Blue looks like a very good hire, and we shall see how this turns out over the next couple of months to the next couple of years. But I think we're in a very good spot 
was Mr. Blue is the general secretary. Oh, the real Rand left. <laughs> he didn't say he was going to do that this time. <laughs> he disappeared a lot. <laughs> it happened last time I was here. I my, apology. my apology, guys. My apology. Sorry about that, man. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so, so Ryan, um, you talk about the, the new CEO. Is he new to Canadian football? Is something that you get somebody out of the country? He's new to Canadian soccer. He's been working around the country and other sports facets, but to the sport of soccer, he's new. But for me, it's, it's good to have somebody who has a different look, more of a business look on the sports business side of things than just somebody who used to play, got up to that level and was basically being a carny. So you know what? It's better to have somebody who's business focused than played in the team, got to the level, and then just be, is just to be a carny. So I'm happy with the choice they made. Okay. What about, I know you guys want to get the CEO first before you guys appointed a coach or soon you guys going to get a coach because you have some big tournament coming up. You have World Cup coming up 2026. Mm -hmm. So you need to get a coach, man. Yeah, I think they'll get one. If we qualify for Copa, I think they're going to get a coach before the Copa, a, a true mm -hmm. new coach in before the Copa, whether that means Biello keeps the job, which I don't think he will after how that Jamaica game went, even if he does qualify. But it depends on if we qualify for Copa or not. If we qualify for Copa, I think we'll quickly get a manager in. If we don't, it might be before the Nations League in November. But you would want that manager in before the friendlies this fall. So I'm going to say either before Copa, if we're in, or sometime in July or August, if we're not. So tell me something, Ryan. A um, lot of rumor and speculation is going around that Thierry Henry. Would you like Henry to coach the Canadian team? As long as it's not Moro Biello or somebody of that ilk or Chris Armis or somebody of that ilk, honestly, I'd be happy with Thierry Henry. I think he coached well at Montreal. I think he's doing well with the French under 23s. Thierry Henry has good thought processes. We have some world-class players. So as it is, yeah, I'd be happy with Thierry Henry as the coach, but is it going to happen? Probably not. Like that's going to cost a good pretty penny. So do I think it's going to happen? No. Do I think it's going to be somebody like Bobby Smyrny Otis or somebody of that ilk? Probably more likely. Or Gio Savarese, somebody more of that ilk, which I'd be really happy with Savarese. But yeah, I mean, of course I'd be happy with Thierry Henry if that was supposed to happen. So tell me something, Ryan. With the Canadian national team, how comes the Federation don't have any money after so many success? Because they like to spend it on themselves. They don't make good advertising deals. They basically waste the money on the big boys, the, the, the fat cats, the top level, the C-suite. They don't like to use the money to get better deals. They don't like to use the money. Whatever is left, it's not enough to pay the players, which is half the problem. As I said, it's a really carny focused organization. And that's the problem, is it's filled with a bunch of carnies who played the sport, who got high enough for some reason to be in the C-suite. Do they know business? I don't know. They're certainly carnies. It's been this way for a while. Mm -hmm. Ryan from from the United States, what do you what do you think about the Canadian men's national team? The success they went to the World Cup. You on the outside looking in on the Canadian team. What do you think of them? I mean, they're a brilliant team. Um, unbelievable. Uh, you know, got so many players in top top teams in Europe, you know, all playing Champions League. I, it's unbelievable that they're really in the position that they're in, that they have to be in this playoff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like the financial mismanagement over there is a huge problem. I mean, I know that sometimes some windows, they don't get all the games that they should be getting. They're not, you know, not meeting up as a team. Um, they don't have proper managers. So that's all got a, you know, way on the way on the side. Um, but there, you know, it, it's hopefully, you know, the world cup in 2026 will be something that really pushes 
um, Canada on because the potential is huge there. Um, they've got some great MLS clubs with a lot of support, and you can just tell with the players they're producing, they're only going to get better. Um, but yeah, I guess right now it's it, it's it's a little bit of a, a false start for Canada to you know have made the World Cup and then looks like they've taken some steps backwards. Um, um, for Chichi Press, John Erdman leave Canada, went to the Toronto FC. Oh, big a miss. When you look at things after the success of Canada for the last 18 months, um, they still haven't found a manager. You, as a reggae boy supporter, peeping over on the fence of this Canadian national team, what do you think on the outside? No, um, listen, you know, be, being a reggae boy fans and having the JFF Federation, we've seen where we have had our struggles in terms of like mismanagement of funds etc and i've always looked at canada as a country in terms of how they've developed over the years in terms of um you know whether you guys call it soccer or football and it is to be admired and you know they've come a far away um qualifying for the world cup which we haven't done since 1998 right you know trying to do it um in the upcoming 2026 one so i think it's a, um definitely big of a miss for canada and they've kind of regressed to a point because they do have good players etc and you know you spoke about Thierry and and and, and some other guys i think Thierry Henry would be a good addition for them However, I have question marks surrounding Thierry Henry. You know what I'm saying? Is he the, the right man to take them forward? You know, we saw him at Monaco where he didn't really do anything, but he's in the backroom staff of, uh, at Belgium, which he left. Um, I think, was it the 2018 World Cup or was it the last World Cup? It was both. He, he left both times. No, he said he was coaching at both World Cups in the Belgian backroom staff. Okay, okay. But he left recently. Yeah, he left. For yeah, he left recently. So... You know, I have question marks surrounding him. However, I think, you know, maybe there are better options out there. Maybe somebody that is has been in the field on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it, it's a it's a risk for me. Canada was supposed to get Thierry Henry, to be, to be honest. Yeah. All right. So, so guys, since as we're on Thierry Henry, it's a very good question I always want to ask footballing people and to have discussion. Now we see the likes of Lampard, not doing well as a manager, world class player, Stevie Gerrard. Um, no, we have the man himself, Henry. What is it that this player has improved the game as a player, world class player at the top level for a good amount of time? What is it, Ryan, make we don't have great players, legend, icon of the game, not becomes a great coach? What is it they're not doing our is coaching is not for everybody. To me, I think when it comes to these legendary players not being good coaches, or at least most of them not being good coaches, I think it's the fact that they're so good, it's hard for them to relate to these players who are not as good as them. Look at Henri with that Montreal mic'd up, right? Like from like three or four years ago when he was coaching there in 2020. That mic'd up just shows you how good he is and how he's like, it's a one-touch. You can take one touch, right? He doesn't understand that these players are lower level than him. They're not as talented as he was. Same as Lampard. Same as Gerard. I don't think Gerard's tactics were too great. I think he was being helped by Michael Beal. I think we know this at this point at Rangers, which is what got him the uh, Aston Villa job. But to me, it's these players don't understand that these players aren't as technically good as what they were back in the day. I think Xabi Alonso is a perfect exception to the rule. If you look at him, he's like, I understand I was great, but I got to help these players be better and I see what their problems are and I fix them. These other legends don't see it like that. They look at like, oh, if we fail, that's a bad look on me. That ruins my legacy. I'm not saying they're egotistical, but I'm sure there's a part of them that says, why are they not as good as me? They're making me look bad. They're ruining my legacy. I don't think Xabi Alonso is like that, but I do think Lampard, Gerard, Henri have a little semblance of that, and they don't want to change. And I think that's part of it is that they just don't understand what a common player is like. Now, of yes. course, Simeone, Mourinho, they were never that good. They played, but they were never that good. That's why they're so good as managers. They know how to read the game, but they were never really good players. Xavi mm. Alonso is an excellent coach, man. Um, Carl Ancelotti, Pep Guardiola, 
um, Jose Mourinho, like, 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 that's four big coach. Rafa Benitez, like, that's five big coach. If you don't learn nothing from these five big coach, man, you ain't serious problem. And listen to the Leverkusen fans. Most of the time, they said Xavi Alonso is the best player on the training pitch at Leverkusen. Um, Ryan, what do you think about the the? We don't, we don't see great players becomes great coach. What is it they're not doing? I mean, I really like um, what Canadian Ryan said. I mean, to, to echo some of that, I think, you know, that I, I, I think the, the game is changing so much that even in five, 10 years, you know, the tactics are getting so different um, from like when Thierry Henry was in his sort of his prime, you know, at Arsenal, it was a very different game than it is today. Um, today's game is a lot based on, you know, stamina running for 90 minutes. Um, just, it's just a very different game. It's definitely not as fluid. Um, it's something that it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, they say it's all statistics based now. Um, so it's just a very different type of game. So for players like Thierry Henry, who were big, sort of, it seems like recently, but it's been, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, I just think the game's kind of evolving and maybe they're not adapting. Most definitely, man. But Ryan, you have a big game coming up against Trinidad and Tobago. Looking at things after that second half performance against the Jamaican national team, peeping over on the fence, looking at Trinidad and Tobago, what should the fans expect? What should we look out for for that Canada versus United State game? For the Canada-Trinidad game, both Canada's the favorite here. That's a fact. Now, what worries me about Trinidad and Tobago, even though Canada brought in a big roster of players who are on form now, they didn't bring in Borean, who made the mistake, who led to us losing that lead. Oso is injured. Larea's not there, but we still got a very good group of players who are on form right now. Biello went from trying to keep everything the same to try to bring in the players who have the best form, which we'll see how that works out. Against Trinidad, that should work. But to me, Trinidad and Tobago were the Appalachian State of CONCACAF. I like to say this because they're a team who always punches above their weight. Nobody expects them to beat the U.S. or Canada or Mexico or anybody who is better than them or has a bigger history than them. But Trinidad and Tobago always fight till that final whistle. They have a very good group of players. They have a good coach in Angus Eve. They got some really good players. They fight, though. They know how to fight. They play tough. You can't run from them is the point. When you have to play them, you're playing a team who wants a pound of your flesh. And they're probably going to get it. Whether you win or not, they're going to get it. They are a team like Appalachian State is, of course, in college football, who has a lot of upsets. But even if they don't upset, they, they put a scare down your spine. And I'm going to say this. I know Canada are the favorites, but again, I'm nervous because I know what Trinidad can bring. I don't care that this is in Frisco. This is on neutral ground. Don't care. To me, Moro Biello is not that good of a coach. Even if we have good players on good form, Biello is not a good coach. Angus Eve is probably better. And depending on the roster that Trinidad brings, this could be a dogfight. It could legitimately a big, be a big dogfight. Do I think Canada wins in the end? Yes. Do I think it's going to be a 4-0? No. I think it's going to be 3-2, 2-1, a hard-fought win. But Canada are going to have to fight. Are they ready to fight? Are they ready to make a point is my question. If they're ready to make a point, we'll see what happens. If they're not, I'm not so sure that night's going to go well. But Ryan, in, in, when you look at things though, I think you need to be a little bit more, the Canadian team need a little bit more improvement in conceding so many goals against some lesser opponents, conceding two, conceding three, like that's need to fix with the Canadian national team. They will score a goal, but they will concede a lot. How, how, how about you go, how your manager going to fix that? Well, we do have still have Kamal Miller, but here's the problem is at the back, Zach McGraw did not get called up, which I think is an absolute miss. Zach McGraw has been playing well for the Portland Timbers. 
He just has been. And they did not call him up for this window. And I think that is a very big mistake. Because if we go Miller Cornelius in center back, oh, no Stephen Vittoria, by the way. If we go Miller Cornelius, that never works. Cornelius is a calamity at the back. I don't know if we should go with Luke DeFugero, the 18-year-old from Fulham. Bombito, maybe, instead of midfield, you put him at center back. But we did not pick our best. We didn't pick the second of our two best center backs, in my opinion. We have a great center back. And then somebody who's young, somebody who's normally a midfielder, or a calamity. I'd rather go three at the back and just see what happens at this point because uh, with two wing backs, because this, uh, or full backs, and then you have the wing backs on the side, because I'm not so sure that Biello is going to do something that helps us concede less. He's honestly done something that's going to make us concede more okay, if, if everything goes wrong. Ryan, you recent to play. Um, Trinidad and Tobago, you defeat them. You're in the semi-final of the Nation League. But what can we expect that a lot of people do know about this Trinidad and Tobago against this team? Well, Trinidad, they came in the first leg uh, with us. They came over and they played a very defensive game. Um, so that will work. Um, if they can keep kind of off the board... You know, they can extend it. It can go, you know, nil-nil. It can go to extra time penalties. But as soon as Canada get one goal, I, I kind of think it's over because I just don't really see them having much of a goal threat. Um, I know that in the second leg they beat the U.S., but, you know, there was some just some mental errors that I just can't see Canada making. I mean, Sergino Dest getting a red card was just something that's just not going to happen. Um I actually think the Canadian attack has the quality that might even, you know, be better than um, the U.S. attack. You got, I mean, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, um, Tejan Buchanan. I mean, it's it's quality. Um, and, you know, there's something about playing in Trinidad. It was like, you know, 90 degrees, humid. Um, Frisco is not going to be like that. Neutral field, uh, going to be very little atmosphere. They're not going to have the fans behind them. I, I just don't see how Canada don't open this up and win. To me, honest, I think uh, Canadian Ryan's being a little dramatic. I think it's going to be three or four nil comfortably. Uh, I think it might even be over at half time. So, hey, we better be careful, you know, or we are speaking on this Trinidad team, you know. Ryan, know what I'm saying, you know. You see, a team like Canada, they will score, but they are atrocious at the back. They will concede. And one thing about this Trinidad team, they're very good passing the ball around. If they can nick the first goal and hit Canada on the counter, that's going to be a difficult game for Canada, especially if Trinidad score first. The game will a little bit more open up. Canada will push in to get that goal. And to get a second one, man, oh, I see Jamaica open up that Canadian team in the last game. I'm saying, man, Trinidad must supposed to rub in their hand right now because at the back, Canada is poor. They're poor. They're poor. But 4 3 3 press, talk to me. Looking at the Canadian Trinidad game, what 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 can you what do you think will happen in this game? No, listen, the, the Canada, despite the struggles recently, right? I think it's it's a it's a quality team. But I have to give credit to Trinidad in the sense that whenever they do show up to play at times, it's a very physical team in terms of how they try to impose themselves on opponents. And I think, um, I can't remember the result off the top of my head. Was it in the, the, the Gold Cup we played Trinidad or the Nations League? Gold Cup. Are we was, it? was it 4 1? Yeah. Yeah, but I remember at the start of the game where the, the, the um, Trinidad was trying to be physical with us, right? And, you know, we eventually opened them up. You know, we, we got the four goals that we deserved. Um, however, where I think Trinidad lacks in, and I think a lot of defensive type of teams lack, lack in this, is where they tend to overly defend against better opposition teams. And eventually, if you do not have, you know, if you don't have the fitness and the stamina, it will eventually wear out and you will be wear in the in, in the latter stages of the game. And I think that's what always happens to Trinidad. So I expect this Canada team, our Canadian team, to definitely, you know, get the result against um, Trinidad. I mean, it can be an upset, but I don't see it this time around. And I, and Canada has something to prove, so they have to go there with the right intention to get this um this win against the, the Trini Trinidadians. Yeah. But Ryan, you're speaking many times on the coach. Is the coach really 
is the issue with this Canadian team because I think from you lose um, the coach, I think everything is just going downhill for Canada. And I love that as a Jamaican fans because we want to take back that spot from Canada. Going for the player haters ball, aren't you? <laughs> but for me, Moro Biello, he was, I knew it would be worse than Herdman when Moro Biello took over. I just knew. Herdman was losing that locker room. As you could tell, if he has the locker room, his teams play well. Just look at Toronto over the past four weeks. If he has the locker room, they play well. If he doesn't, it starts unraveling. That's what it was doing at the end there. So you say Herdman were losing the dressing room? I thought he was losing the dressing room. No. And no. at the end there, I thought he was losing the dressing room. I think room. so. Yeah. Maybe it was more the C-suite situation that led to it, but even he didn't really want to go to the World Cup because there were familial situations. And he basically said he probably wasn't ready to go to the World Cup either after his familial situations happened during 2022. So I, I think it all adds up, so to speak. I think his energy was getting zapped. The C-suite was ruining things. The players were pissed at the C-suite. He couldn't bring them back on side. And I don't think it was his fault that he lost the locker room, but he's the coach. The locker room was lost. But if you could see as well, with Toronto, Lorea, the Canadian boys who played for him are back on side now. So I don't, again, it doesn't seem like it was his fault. It just seems like it was all the extenuating circumstances that led to him losing the locker room. Because if you lose a locker room, you blame the coach. But again, Oso and Lorea are back on side with TFC. So as far as I can tell, I think Herdman situations made Herdman lose that locker room. He couldn't bring him back on side. And then Biello's in there, and he doesn't have the man management skills to bring him back on side either because, again, it's not really the manager's fault. And besides Biello, he was never that good with Montreal either. The only good thing he did was get them to an Eastern Conference final to get slapped by Toronto to follow the script. That's what he did. That's all he could do. That's the best thing he's ever done. He doesn't know what he's doing. And the guy, he's like, oh, we're, I'm going to get the job. Dude, why are you saying we in this press conference? I know you're still the interim manager, but you're saying it like, I think I'm going to be given the full-time job. I'm like, dude, you don't deserve it. <laughs> Shut up. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they're going to make a bad, I hope they don't make a bad decision. But if he's, if, if, if he's that confident, I don't like where this could be going. Mm. All right, we'll, get right. we'll get to good confidence and bad confidence when we talk about USA Jamaica. But Biello's the the uh, the prism of bad confidence. Well, Ryan, go on with the problem over Canada because trust me, I need back that spot from me. Jamaica. Need that spot, all right. But what is the score prediction for the Trinidad game? I'm gonna go with four to two Canada. I trust the forwards. I don't trust the defense. 4-2. Fair enough. What about you, Ryan? I mean, Canadian Ryan has been saying how bad the defense is. So I'm starting to think maybe there's going to be some goals. I'll give Trinidad a goal. I'll say 3-1 Canada. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I'll agree with um, Ryan. 3-1. Okay. I'm going with Trinidad to beat Canada. Well, two goals to one. Honestly, Doing that for the likes and the clicks and the all that. <laughs> no man, wouldn't shock me if it happened. I've seen, I've seen worse. I've seen eight one. I've seen worse. It wouldn't shock me. I listen, man. I'm watching one football, and it's just things behind the scene with Canadian football is getting really spooky at this moment. And when so many nines in the background, it's never a good thing. Remember. The reason why Canada has been successful for the last 18 months, the backroom nice, everybody on the same page. And when everybody's on the same page, success will come. And that's the reason why um, Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, they cannot win the Champions League with everyone. You understand? You have to have 
a structure and that's where Canada is going right now. They don't have that structure off the pitch causing a lot of noise. Owing players money and all of them stuff there. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm picking Trinidad. Trinidad has been licking their lip and looking at the the Jamaica game and can look at the weakness of this Canadian team and thing. So I'm predicting 2-1. Trinidad and Tobago. Remember, you hear it right here first. All right? Now, let's move on, Ryan. Um, Start with 4 3 3 press. 4 3 3 press. Panama versus Mexico. What do you think with this game? I really think this game going to be a juicy game. Well, what do you think? No, um, today's what? Tuesday? From, from last week, I was, you know, looking forward to that game and, and thinking about it. And listen, Panama is a, is a quality opposition, right? Quality quality team that I do admire. And I think, you know, they'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Mexicans. It's, it's not a team. Both teams are, are not teams that who that, that will go defensive against each other. Um, however, for this game, I think it will be any team that win on, on the day will be benefiting more of who, whoever is the better tactician on that day, Ryan, mm -hmm. at least the real Ryan, who will win. You know, um, I, I feel like Panama will get this win, to be honest. I, I just have that feeling. Well, and you know, many people in Conquer Cup haven't give. They don't give them credit. They don't give this Panama team credit. There has been excellent goal cup. This is going to be a very good rematch. I can't be wrong, you know. This is a Gold Cup final. Now. This Mexico and Panama went to the final. And Panama played very well. They just did not put the ball in the back of the net. And with the Panama team is physical, that's always going to be a problem for the Mexican. They will disrupt the Mexican, want to keep possession of the football, want to press them. I just think the Panama team has been coming together. They're finding their feet. And I think, I believe they will turn over Mexico. But what do what you think, um, Ryan, and this year? For me, I think Mexico with Quinones, that's the one big difference here. They have Julian Quinones. They did not have him at the Gold Cup final. Julian Quinones is a very good player. He had a really good apertura with America. Clausura, he's had some moments. He hasn't been as hot. But for me, they need a guy like Quinones up top. They do. Mexico. And if they have him, I think things will be a little bit better, at least on the forward play, especially if he's on the wing with Santi Jimenez up top. But again, Panama, again, they're a very good team. Thomas Christensen has made this Panama team play very well over the past 18 months. Thomas Christensen is a wonderful manager. If there's anybody who could beat Mexico, he can cook something up. I think we'll have a very good tactical battle between Jimmy Lozano and Thomas Christensen in that second semifinal. Now, for me, I think Mexico, they are playing better under Jimmy Lozano. And that's exactly why I think they will win the semifinal. I do not think they will crash out at the semifinal I think it will be a 2-1, 3-2 win. I think it's going to be a tough game. I think both teams are going to get their chances. I think both teams will put away their chances. But as of now, for me, I think Mexico beats Panama by the skin of their teeth once again to get to the final. I trust Jimmy Lozano. I trust Quinones. Carasquilla is a very good player. Panama has got a very good squad and a good manager. But I think Mexico has a little bit more to get over the line. Wow, wow. Surprise. I am really surprised you picked Mexico, Ryan. I'm really surprised because a couple months ago, you're knocking, you're beating the Mexico. Ah, this is what football do to you, you know, man. Football is a hombre, you know. Jamaica, hombre, this Canadian team. I'm telling you, man, having Ryan on this show every single time, he just rubbing salt in my face. Oh, you're going to beat the Mexico. I'm going to beat the United States. Is it best team in CONCACAF? And look at things, man. 18 months after. Looking at what is going on over there. Ryan, where is this energy? Where is this hype that you have 18 months ago, my brother? It's gone. 
<laughs> zapped it. They, they've cooked it off like alcohol in a fish fry. It's gone. Hmm. It's gone. It's gone. Man, God help you, man. God help you. God help you, man. That Jamaican win, man. I chose this life. I chose this life. I got you. I got you, Ryan. But talk to me, Ryan. What do you think about this Mexico? Mexico is your rival. You, I know you would love to see a Mexico um, United States final, but one thing I have to tell you, man, Jamaica and Panama will break up that, man. This is going to be history <laughs> coming Thursday. Yeah, so, I mean, as an American, I, I can't possibly pick Mexico to win this game. Um, but even, even if I was looking at, from an unbiased perspective, I, I don't think the Mexicans are any good anymore. Um, you know, they've been struggling. Uh, when was the last time they won a, a, an important game? I mean, they, they kind of fumbled their way through that playoff. Um, some kind of sketchy calls against Honduras that I saw. So they just get through there after, you know, losing the first leg. Um, their, their summer friendlies, um, or, you know, fall friendlies, you know, they didn't get great results, you know, playing teams like Uzbekistan, um, playing teams like Australia, they didn't show much of anything. So, yeah, I don't really rate this Mexican side at all. Um, I, you know, you see in their players constantly going back, uh, to the Mexican league, they're, they're not applying themselves in Europe. I'm not sure if it's because they're not able, but. Um, and you look at the Panama team, you know, it's a very experienced team. Um, you know, they did great to get to this position. They battered Costa Rica, um, you know, over two legs, beat them handedly both times. Um, and, you know, it's a team that, as we've said, uh, has been doing well in tournaments. You know, they, they got to the Gold Cup final. Um, you know, they've been in the Nations League in the past. They've narrowly lost to Mexico the last couple of times. I think this is their time. I mean, they're not going to keep losing to Mexico. So I think... This is Panama's moment, and yeah. Yeah, I think Panama is really good, man. I think Panama are really finding their feet. Um, but Mexico, man, as Ryan said, um, Mexico has been improving for the last Gold Cup that we saw. The, the, the style of play, the, or they possess the ball, or they move the I, ball. I don't know how you could say that, really. I mean, the results haven't shown that they've improved. I mean, they've been playing teams that you would think, Australia, they're tying them. Uzbekistan, they're tying them. They're going to Honduras, they're losing. I, I don't know how that shows that they're improving to me. They did draw Germany, though. Which they the drew US Germany. Too. Fair enough. The US got beat. Yeah, I, I think the Germans were a bit more up for playing us than they were playing the Mexicans. That's what I would say, you know, second game of the tour. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, as I said, the Mexicans, to me, don't look like they're improving. Um, they, they don't really have players coming up. I know you're bigging up this Canones guy, you know, looks a decent player. But, again, he's playing in Liga MX. And, um, you know, nice, nice that he's doing bits there. But, you know, we – we don't want our players playing there. I mean, Brandon Vasquez, good player. He's scoring goals there, and we don't want him. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm quite – I don't see Mexico progressing. But, but playing devil's advocate here, Brandon Vasquez playing the way he has in Champions Cup and Liga MX has got him honestly up to second in the U.S. striker depth chart in my book. So uh, I don't see that either. I, I can name at least probably four or five forwards i mean that haji Wright. he's doing bits in the championship double digit goals sergeant unlucky but he's got double digit goals and then how are you going to pick a guy playing in mexico over a guy playing uh in the french league or in the champions league with psv i mean it's just you can't so i, I mean i like vasquez i think he's a decent player but he's, he's miles off it um the fact he wasn't called up when sergeant got injured shows you that is true that, that is a good point but the sad part about the U.S. is Balogun hasn't locked down that starting spot when people thought he would. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, so Balogun, he, you know, he's had his moments. Um, he's looked good in a USA shirt in the big moments, you know, scoring against uh, scoring against Canada, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he comes up in big moments. He hasn't looked great in some of the friendlies. Um, but we kind of – we have looked disjointed in those friendlies, I, I will be honest. But, you know, Balogun's a guy that needs a lot of service. Um, I think our wingers are on great form. So I think anyone that is going to be put in that spot this time is going to get a lot of good service. Um, you know, but man, I mean, yeah, Balogun's having a rough season. I mean, fair play Monaco, they're giving him the start still. So I think as the confidence is still there, so it, it's bound to turn and 
why not a better time than right now? I mean, in the USA shirt against Jamaica, whose defense doesn't really impress me too much. Hey, if Gio Reyna plays 90 minutes, I think Balogun might have a good game. Gio uh, yeah. has to play the 10, though. Yeah, I mean, Reyna, it's it's an interesting one. Will he get, you know, selected? You need some creativity in there. Um, but it's, you never know with Greg, what's he going to do with Reyna? Um, he always shows up in a USA shirt when he gets his moments. I would think Reyna would be better suited to play in the final. I don't know if he's match fit enough to play two games in such close proximity. It'll be interesting. Um, for me, against Jamaica, I'd want to go maybe – um, you know, some more higher intensity midfielders like maybe uh, Johnny, Yunus Musa, um, and then maybe leave it like McKinney as almost a creative outlet. But yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting how he fits everyone in. But so final score. So you're saying Panama will beat Mexico 2-1? Or what is the score prediction? I'll go with 1-0 uh, Panama over Mexico. How about you, Ryan? Three two Mexico. What about you? No, two one. Two one Panama. Two one Panama. I'm going with oh. two one Panama. <laughs> two it's, it's definitely gonna be a tight game, you know. We have to take that into consideration. Uh, 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 only problem I have with Panama, they, they don't score a lot of goal. That's the only issue I have with Panama. They don't have that striker up front. We're going to put the ball in the back of him. That's the only thing that really missing for this Panama team. Would you agree with me, guys? It yeah. depends if Jose Fajardo's on form. If he's not on form, it's a lot harder. But if he's on form, he can be some. He could be really good, Jose Fajardo. Yeah. Because Panama, to me, I think, I think Panama is the best team in this region right now. Okay, that's just not true. But <laughs> okay, no, that's not true. I, I think bro, I think Panama is the best team right now in CONCACAF. Right you know why I think that? I Listen, I am. I will get to this United States team. You know. They are good on paper, but they are not that team, man. United States, trust me. If most of these tournaments play outside the United States, they will struggle. That's true. If this game against Jamaica, semi-final, home and away, Ryan, you will struggle, bro. Mix USA don't good away from home bridging. I, I agree. Our away form is very poor. I, I totally agree with that. But uh, the USA is by far the best team in the region. It's not even close. I mean, I, I would say on paper, I mean, they're the best team to an extent. But I think what, what's missing from the United States is this like cohesiveness with fitting in all these pieces. And that's always been the question mark surrounding um, the USA in terms of fitting in the pieces and the cohesiveness. You know, but maybe to a slight extent. The reason why it looks like it's a question is because Greg Berhalter is still the manager. If BJ yeah. Callahan was the manager, they would be dominating. BJ Fair Callahan enough. would be the full on manager after the Nations League. I mean, hell, even with Greg making the calls of the Gold Cup, they still played pretty well under BJ. Greg is an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing, he just doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll see. I'll see if I'm fully on board with that after this. I mean, if Berhalter goes and wins us another tournament, I'm not really going to have too much to say. I think a lot of people are quick to to get on his back. Um, you know, maybe we could play a little bit more expansive, um, and some of the losses have not been been acceptable. But I'm not going to. I wouldn't really put too much pressure on the coach right now. We'll see how we do. If we lose, like, don't get me wrong. If we lose, I'll be fully saying to sack him. But if he gets us another win, it's it's clearly been an effective time period, you know? It's the Nations League and Gold Cup. That's all he's won. Once he gets out of those tournaments, outside of the USA, he pisses his pants. I don't know. I thought we played um, a very good World Cup, to be honest. Um, I have a question, right? And... Listen, I, I don't mean to disrespect the Americans, but what is what is the expectation of Americans with this USA team for like Copa America as well as uh, 2026? Um, I would say with Copa America, we would try and be looking for a semifinal spot. Um, that might be a little bit ambitious, but a semifinal spot. Um, and then the World Cup, we would be wanting probably a quarterfinals or better. Um, I think that's realistic expectations. Um, to fall short on either would be pretty poor. Um, 
Copa America is going to be tough, but I think, you know, we get Uruguay out of the way in the group stage. We probably will make a semifinal, but it's, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, you, you can't play too much of this open attacking football against top, top teams. They will expose you. So we need to be a little pragmatic at times. My my thing, my thing with the United States fans, I think, I would say the United States fans, some of them ungrateful. I think, I think you guys give Brata our time. When I sit down and watch, when I sit down and watch that game against you, you USA versus Canada, um, USA versus England, I mean, I say, wow, is this a Kankakaf team? Is putting down the football, boxing around the football, creating opportunity? You guys played excellent against England. And I know a lot of people don't understand, and even the United States fans. They're not patient, you know. This team is young. You're going to have mixed result. That is what you get from youngster. That's why you need a balance. You need experience in that team. And how many leaders, how many experience in that United States team? Different from Christian Polisic. Not yeah. much. Not a lot, you're right. Um, and, and that's the issue with United States fans. This coach has won the Gold Cup and two Nation League. One. Like, one? BJ I think... Flyers. Man, I think the United States fans them is so ungrateful, man. Some of I, them... Uh, uh, man, listen, I, I, I think sometimes... I, I think sometimes... Um, I don't know if it's because of the resources that they have at times. They feel as if... Listen, it's all about growth, you know, but sometimes I feel like they can be overly ambitious in terms of some of the expectations. Yes, the team can be more cohesive and they can, you know, play better and get better results. But when it comes to the big boy tournaments, that's where I feel like they lose their head at times. And I feel like they should focus on developing more in the CONCACAF region. And then last the last World Cup, you guys did well. That's that's a fact, right? Went to the round of 16. However, you know, Copa America coming up, you use that as a next stepping stone. And then World Cup in America, use that as even a bigger stepping stone for the team. And by that time, the players will be more mature. You probably have more quality coming through. And then you can, you know, assess it from there. I mean, I, I totally agree with all of this. I mean, I think as you're saying, you know, our World Cup results kind of get overlooked. I mean, England is one of the best teams in the world. And we went there and pulled it had a chance, you know, hit the bar. Um, you know, we were in that game. We could have won that game. Wales, we give away a silly penalty. Otherwise, you know, that's three points right there. I thought we played a great World Cup. And as I was saying, you know, you go against these top teams, you just can't play. I know everyone in the U.S. circles wants us to play this, you know, crazy like press and everyone, you know, pushing the ball, crazy amount of possession, scoring loads of goals. I mean, that's, that's wishful thinking, but sometimes you got to be pragmatic, take a step back. You know, some of the selection choices have been questionable earlier in his reign, but he seems to now be getting the squads, I think, pretty much perfect. I don't think there's really players that are missing. Um, and it, I don't know. I, I'm very open to giving him, um, you know, more chances. And and as you said, like, you know, we've been winning the trophies in CONCACAF. And as, as long as we have a good result here, in in Concacaf, I I I, sh I wouldn't want to be hearing any more chat about firing Burhalter. To me, I think it's about the Copa. It's not about Nations League. He's won a Nations League before. He should. They should be the favorites here. They got back to back. In theory, to me, it's about what happens at the Copa. If they can't make the semifinals, I think there's a big question to have about Burhalter. We've seen how they played under B.J. Callahan. That's the problem. They played so much better at that Nations League. They played so much more riveting. I thought that was some really good football that they were playing against Mexico and Canada. And for me personally, if they don't play enough, well enough at the Copa, you have to have the question of, was it the right move to go back, to bring back Burhalter? I mean, be well, granted. Canadian Ryan, I, I don't know, man, because – I, I get we've got Panama and Bolivia in the group stage of the Copa, which you would think, OK, that's somewhat straightforward. But you've also got Uruguay in that group who are probably the, the best team in South America. If we get out of that group, if I'm correct, I think it's either Colombia or Brazil. 
in that next round before we even make a semifinal. Now, I don't think even on our best day, we're anywhere near a level of a Brazil team. Um, Colombia is a very, very good team. That's probably a 50, 50. Um, yeah, maybe that'll go down to a coaching decision, but I don't know. I mean, I would love to make a semifinal. I would love to win it, but I think the squad is still a long way off from competing for a title or even a semifinal. I think Brazil's falling off right now. I think they're vulnerable right now. They're very vulnerable. Brazil is not maybe its vintage self, but come on, that their quality of players is just even a bad Brazil team is just so much better than our current team. But on paper, there's but on paper, the U.S. have these great players. Maybe they're overhyped. Maybe people love hyping Pulisic and Balogun and Reina. But I've seen moments where Pulisic, Reina, Balogun are humming. These players on paper can be great. No, don't, don't get me wrong. They're, they're so good. Good. they're really good players, but they're not Brazil standard players. Even the current Brazil squad, they're not Brazil standard players. I mean, Brazil right now have just Premier League forwards up and down the roster. I mean, we've got some good forwards playing at some decent clubs in Europe. They're not Premier League standard. Listen, guys, and, and, and to be honest, people, we have over 300 of you guys, almost 400 of you guys in the chat. And we have 29 of you guys having hit the subscribe button. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have 29 of you guys in the chat haven't subscribed as yet. Hit the like button. Big up to all the people down in the comment section. You know what? With the United States team, I still believe the United States team, I still think they need a better manager. But I think they give Bralta a hard time. I still mm -hmm. think I think the base on the players that United States have that are playing in Europe, I think a Jesse Marsh would have do a fantastic job with this United States team. They want to play attacking football, they want to play pressing football. I think with FEM experience playing in the Champions League, playing in England, playing in Germany, I think is the perfect match for the United States team. I agree with you, but it seems like Jesse Marsh wants to go back into European club football. Like the way he's been acting and doing all these Sky Sports shows and being over in Europe, I, I think he wants to get back into club football in Europe. I don't know if he wants to take the U.S. men's national team job. I think that's the problem. Yeah, I think he has more to give to, to European football to an extent. You think he's, you think he's better than the United States job? I think that's what he thinks. Oh. Why why you think Ryan? Again, he's been on Sky Sports recently. He's been staying in Europe trying to find inroads back into European club football, especially a Champions League level team. I don't think it's going to work out with how Leeds went down. I'm not saying it's his fault, but it, they definitely want to look at it like it's, it's his fault. So I think if he goes back to England, it's going to be a championship level relegation fight. Maybe Germany gives him a chance at a pretty good club like an Eintracht Frankfurt or something. I don't know if he wants that. Maybe Leverkusen as well could give him a shot. But I think the way Marsh thinks is he wants to go back to club football. He feels like he has something to prove, which, I mean, I don't blame him. I think he got railroaded at Leeds. I honestly think he got railroaded over there. Mm -hmm. They looked at him like Ted Lasso, which I'm not surprised. But I think he got railroaded. I think he could have done better over there. He could have had a chance, but they didn't give him one mm. more than he got. So I understand why he thinks the way he thinks, but I think he thinks he wants European club football. He wants to make a point before he goes to the U.S. I'm not saying he doesn't want it ever. He just doesn't want it now. Yeah, boy, that and, and that's a big pressure in job, you know, to coach the United States, especially having a World Cup qualify, a World Cup in their backyard No. Um, plus, I, I think he's the perfect fit. But what said you, Ryan, as a United States fan, when you look at him resume? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Jesse Marsh is excellent. Um, but as, as Canadian Ryan was saying, I think he definitely has ambitions on you know coaching clubs. Um, you know, the club game and the international game is very different. Um, you know, the, the international game is very much almost like a part time job. And I think he's got the ambitions to be a top, top manager, um, in Europe. And, if you look at it, I think realistically 
him working for the U.S. national team is, is probably always going to be an option, regardless of how it pans out. He's probably our highest. He's undoubtedly our highest profile manager that we coach. Had. Yeah, first United States coach, yeah. coach in the Champions League. Yeah. So I think you know ultimately I, I can't see him coming in anytime soon um, unless something very dramatic happens. Maybe it is you know how we perform in this nation's league. Uh, maybe we you know maybe we lose to Jamaica and then all of a sudden you know it's panic mode or something but i i don't see uh i don't see, i think burr halter will be the coach in at the world cup yeah and uh, uh and stuff but so we talk about the united states expectation on their coach i think Berhalter is doing a good job but i still think he need a little bit i don't know how much more time because i don't know man he brought give him mixed feelings man i want him to get more time but on the other hand, man, United States to go on to lose to Trinidad and, you know, when it, the real thing kick in, this brother are going to feel the United States. I'm telling you, man, I see it. It's a possibility that they don't win any game in the Copa America. That's the problem with Beralta. You don't know what he's going to get. That is nonsense. That's absolutely nonsense. Bro, uh, USA hey. is going to cruise against Bolivia, and they'll probably batter Panama as well. At a, in, a home, in a home game, that's what will happen. With a, with a USA crowd behind them, that's what will happen. As for Uruguay, I don't know. That's a difficult game. Bro, but but it's easy. Easy. Panama and Bolivia, you say you're going to run through Bolivia? Absolutely. <laughs> Bolivia, maybe three or four nil. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I agree with that part. part. Now, the Panama one's the problem I have. I could see you Panama know. being very tough. I could see Panama being tough. I mean, guys, they're playing Panama in Atlanta. That's going to be an actually like a huge U.S. crowd, which is rare. I just don't. I'm, uh, Panama are a very good outfit, but I just do not see when the stakes are this high for us, we will just turn it on to a different gear. And I that's mean, true. Very, 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 even us playing Panama in the final of this is going to be very different than what it would be like in the Copa America. Everyone knows how huge the Copa America is. We will take them. No bother. In, in the yeah, just just to add to something, right? You know what I think will be the downfall of the United States to an extent is the over expectation of this team. I'm not saying that they shouldn't achieve something at the Copa America as well as the World Cup being hosted in, in the United States, but there's this immense pressure. And you know what? With Americans, is the labeling that they label the team. When you guys label Christian Pulisic as the LeBron James of soccer and this type of stuff, it adds added pressure. And I think the United no, States fans look at players. I disagree with you on that, man. Polisic is a different animal when he come on to the yeah, but, yeah, but when you say that he's the LeBron James of soccer, it's kind of too far. And when you, when you, just because players are going to Europe, I think Americans look at it as, um, oh, we're the, we're the best thing since sliced bread in CONCACAF. We should just dominate everyone. So that over-expectation to an extent, and the Ryan at the top screen mentioned um, being pragmatic. Throughout these tournaments, I believe you have to be pragmatic and there's a big accusation against um Garrett Southgate. A lot of the times he's pragmatic, but it does get the best results. You know, I was looking at some statistics recently where at the international level, teams don't really play attacking football, counter press, they do not counter press, such as respective clubs in different leagues. You know what I'm saying? So it's best to go pragmatic at times and kind of lower expectations and then take it one game at a time. And that's the important thing. One game at a time. You cannot look at it like, oh, we're gonna win the next three games. True. I'll give you that one, yeah. Yeah, cool. um, international football is a different thing, man. Um, you don't get much space, and in international football, when the team score first, it's an uphill battle for come from that. Especially when they're playing against good team. Especially when they're playing a, in these tournament, when they're playing a Copa America and all of them stuff there, it's difficult, and that's going to show the competitive. We will see where our region is at in football in Copa America. Jamaica will be there. Will Canada will be there? Possibility. United States, Mexico. I believe the budget that United States and Mexico have, I think United States and Mexico, at least every World Cup in the Rona 16 or quarterfinal. Mm. Especially for Mexico, quarterfinal is an objective. Is a is a goal for them. Yeah, but they'll always fall under that objective because of how carny the fmf is 
the fact they don't want to move their players onto Europe. They put all this these high bounties, high uh, asking prices on their players because they'd rather keep the players in Liga MX. And then if they go back to Europe, they normally don't get played. So guess what? They'll go back to Mexico. And even then, the self-fulfilling prophecy fills itself out anyway. The Liga is it because they want to grow for them league. Is it because the Mexico want to grow for them league? That's why they put a big price tag on the. No, they want money. The directivos want money. And they'll get money any way they want. If you're going to pay them for that player, they're getting money. They have some big teams that make a lot of money. Let's realize that most, there's a lot of teams that are owned by Televisa, Grupo Orlegi. There's like these three big ownership groups in Mexican football. Televisa, Orlegi, there's three big groups. It's all about the money. There's a reason why League's Cup is a thing and the U.S. Open Cup has been thrown to the wayside because the money that comes from it makes them richer and they'll pocket every cent. That's what Mexico is. They will not ever, they hit their ceiling and they're just going to keep going down and down and down. And people are like, Mexico used to be great. Yeah. Then they started caring about the money. They got greedy. And here we are now. Jimmy Lozano is trying to keep them afloat. He's he's even getting pissed off at the board. I wouldn't be surprised if they sack him because he finally gets pissed off enough to just go off on him. He's the only thing saving them. They don't have anybody worth a damn besides him. Maybe Ignacio Ambris, but they don't want him because he's not their perfect type of manager. Because Mexico has certain standards for their managers, if you've heard this. Ambrice does not fit those. Trust me, Mexico will not be what you think they will be because they are completely and utterly carny. They are more carny than the JFF and Canada combined. <laughs> it is the worst. You think so? Yeah. Wow. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, Mexico, huge country, huge population. Number one sport is soccer, football. They should be a lot better than they are. The Mexico should be dominating the region they should be going and doing really well in world cups talking about semifinals finals i mean mexico is not that smaller than brazil it's the same sort of culture and yet they're they're miles off each other they're not even comparable so yeah it is huge corruption down there and it, it's a, in one respect it's a shame but i don't mind it because the u.s is now dominating so i'm just calling it like i'm seeing it that's all you need to, you see, like how you, you brag, so United said, I want you have that same energy when you play against a team in a Copa, you know, because that expectation, you're dominating Tankakaf. But, you know, I don't think you dominate because you're not winning the game them away from home. Check your World Cup qualifier game them, my brother. <laughs> Check your World Cup qualifier game them away from home. When you dominant, when you talk about when Mexico is dominant, they're beating them home and away. Make, USA not doing that. Yeah, I mean, I can. what I can only say is, at least the last World Cup qualifiers, our group was extremely young, and going forward, it will not be ever, probably ever that young again. I mean, we after we didn't qualify, it was a complete restart. But, um, you know, I, I just think it, for us, I mean, we're, our, our federation probably isn't as corrupt as maybe some of these others, but ours is very money-driven as well. I mean, we're, we constantly put friendlies at home, and I think we would be better served by playing away games when they're friendlies away from home because a lot of these times we go down to El Salvador, we go down to Panama, we go down to, to Mexico. We, we The players have never had that experience before. So it's no wonder we, we do poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is something that the Federation need to look into, playing away. And as you're speaking on that, Jamaica, Trevor, better away from home we don't get much crowd in the national stadium we travel better we play better away from home and because we play all our game them away i prefer we start play the game them in florida because nobody come into the stadium and watch it playing in new york we get more crowd in new york plating one of the people where's the danny jed danny jed has said oh that cute that's why the Federation not uh, making enough money. Because the people not coming out to watch a football. I guarantee you, if they bring Cup of these World Cup qualify in the likes of Guide Ryan, he want to say something. 
I don't think you can take home World Cup qualifiers out of your own nation unless there's extenuating extenuating. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Because that's World Cup qualify. Forget that ab, um advantage is huge, and I agree with you on that. Thanks for your clarity. I think by, by law you can't take a World Cup home qualifier out of your home country unless for extenuating circumstances, like oh, yeah. played in Florida during COVID. Or like how some of these teams can't play, or Haiti can't play in Haiti. They have to play in Dominican Republic because of the uh, political strife in the country. I mean, CONCACAF, normally that's earlier rounds anyway, but it's about the extenuating circumstances of the situation. Yeah. Ryan, what do you ask me, sir? What's sweet to in the comment section? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think Jamaica does just fine at home. I mean, I, I don't know why you would want to move it. And, you know, I, I know when you guys play you know, your home qualifiers, you get big crowds. So I, I didn't really understand what was being talked about there. But I mean, I, sure. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I can't take an L on that one. <laughs> well, let's get into the big game now. The United States versus Jamaica. Ryan, what may I tell you, sir? So for those who are watching back on the replay, so just bring a little bit of clarity. We preview the Trinidad and Tobago game. We give our prediction. We preview the Mexico, Panama. Now we're going to preview the United States versus Jamaica. And by the way, Jamaica missing key player. Leon Bailey missing because of suspension. Breaking the curfew. They might go out Yellow red card. Um, Shamal Boza is out with card. And also Ethan Pinnock missing because of injured. And Amari Bell missing. That's like six of our starting player missing. No, this is going to be a cheeky, cheeky game for Jamaica. But what said you, Ryan, and they say, what do you think about this game? <laughs> Let me tell you, when Jaime Hall Grimson spoke at that Final Four press conference and he looked straight at Greg Berhalter and said, we're getting our signature win in two weeks, I'm like, this man has balls knowing how many people. <laughs> I'm like, well, damn, if you're going to be that confident, I think you could win. Because Greg would be, Greg'd be like, hey, we, we want to repeat, we want to three-peat, but if we don't, we don't. Hall Grimson wants to come at their throat. Mm. And he has the confidence that they will. And you Bro, know, that, I'm that I'm, sold. Come in. I'm sold. I'm sold. Jamaica's winning. After what he said, the balls that he had to say that to, looking straight at Greg Berhalter. You know what? I know this is this is a wild one, but I, I believe in Jamaica. I want y'all to win this thing since you're there. Go win this thing. Right. Mine are mine are sold with some look at unicorn meeting. You know. Mine because you know, like United States, you know. Man, we are going with the right. <laughs> I, I like how Grimson believes. Okay. Like, you know what? I'm sold. Well, I'm sold. I mean, I, I think the manager, you know, squaring up with Burhalter, that's a lot of fake bravado, to be honest. There's nothing in that. I mean, that's great, but there's not a lot of substance there. I mean, as as you've said, they're missing so many key players. It's it's probably not even gonna be close. Wow. Listen, I, I really I love I love Americans. The the confidence that you guys have, I really I really love it. And you know, you guys always live up to the, the rivalry. What I will say pertain to this Jamaican team. Um, when the twenty three months squad was selected, obviously Leon Bailey um being suspended. Many Jamaicans, right? And I hope I hope these Jamaicans are listening. Many Jamaicans tend to say that Leon Bailey has hasn't really lived up the expectations for the national team, which is true to an extent. And I was looking at his form recently, and I was saying if Leon Bailey could have transition this form into the, the upcoming game against the United States, then he would be a huge difference maker for us. However, with him being suspended and key injuries to the team and Shamar Nichols and um, Demar Green not being available for this game against the United States, it, make, it makes this game an uphill battle. However, I do think if the Americans come into this game a bit cocky, then we could see where the Jamaicans could, could actually beat you guys. And I, I still think we have enough respectable players to put up a good fight against you guys and win. I yeah. mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jamaica's always given us good games. But yeah, as you said, like, Leon Bailey is such a huge player. Antonio, I know he gets the odd goal nowadays, um, but he's he's a little bit over the hill. I mean, maybe that'll come back to bite me. But 
I just don't see, you know, I just don't see where you guys are really going to threaten the U.S. I mean, I, I mean, you're saying Tamari Gray's out. He's huge. I just don't know. Where, where's the goal? Where Who's going to score the goals if you're going to beat us? You, we have some player that you don't know about, you know. We have a player that plays in, in, in CFAS. You know CFAS? Is that your league? No. He named CFAS. He played in Turkey. All right. Okay. CFAS. Okay. Turkey. Okay. So that boy going to score a double pan, you're going to you're going to get to know him. That's huh? the great thing about football. You, know? <laughs> you don't really know some of our good talented players out there. And him going these players going if 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 Trinidad can beat you, we can beat the United States. It's just yeah. a it's a very different game playing in the US than it is playing, you know, in Trinidad or Jamaica. I mean, this is gonna be like there's no weather elements with this. It's an air-conditioned stadium. I'm not seeing this, guys. I'm not seeing it being too close. Sorry. Um, Ryan, check the, check the studio. Really. So, so people, hit the like button. Share it out down in the comment section. He's talking a lot of stuff. We're going to bring a surprise starting level to face the United States, where the United States don't even expect. Look at this. <laughs> What are you saying about this team? So let me bring it through it. We have Damian Lowe, we have Hector, two experienced center back that know to play football in CONCACAF. Um, um, Ryan, stick up, right? Michael Hector, he was supposed to be Bernard, but he wasn't in the search thing, so Bernard. Yeah. And I, 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 um, Hector, Damian Lowe, we have Dexter, we have Greg Lee, we have... Lati here, we have Daniel Johnson, we have Casey Palmer, one of the artists midfielder right now in the championship. Bobby Reed, Cephas, and Mikel Antonio. Don't come on this show and tell me about it now. I'll be close. Are you mad? I mean, it is a low-key good team. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like some players in there. There's some good players. And I, I don't fully trust our center backs, to be totally honest. But I don't know. I mean, I know Antonio's a Premier League player. But, okay, you've got some players behind him. That Palmer plays at a Coventry, I think. So, decent it's standard. Like, it's quite Reed. I mean, there's some good players, but oh, come on. If our midfield starts cooking, you guys might not even really get the ball ever, to be honest. That is a good point. But we don't really need the ball to win the game. All we need to do is defend it properly, keep it tight in the midfield, compa, bring in Cephas, bring in Bobby Reed, make, make it become a five-man midfield inside there. Solid, allow you to play the first ball, and then press you when you come inside that midfield to turn over the ball. And Mikel Antonio with him pace, Casey Palmer have, have a high to pick out a pass. Can pick you guys. Mikel Antonio bullying this United States back line. Bobby Reed, Cephas. And the thing about this lineup, trust me, my brother. Don't watch the lineup. Watch the fight. We are not giving up. And it won't be a easy. It won't be in a 4-1. It won't be in a 5-1. This game going to be pretty, pretty close. And for me... As a Jamaican looking at this team, it's hard to call. It's hard to call. I am up against a young United States team. They are talented, don't get me wrong. But this Jamaican team, mix of experience, know to play this game. And Coach Agrim, sir, he go up against England. He go up against some of the best team. He know to put a team to get the best out of the defense, and that's what we hope our grims here because that is main number one strength is in defense. And if Trinidad can come to the United States and you guys score three goals in the last 10 minutes against a Jamaican team with so many experience, with so many talented players, trust me, my brother. And you know what going to be the United States? They don't know much about CFAS. And I'm going to be cooking, my brother. Remember, I tell you this, man. I believe in the heart of the Jamaicans. I do. They got heart. And I will say, when it comes down to it, the one thing that scares me is Andre Blake. The form that Andre Blake has been on for the past month with Philadelphia, I know he's had an injury in there. Philadelphia has been trash since the 
since the Supreza tie. It scares me because Andre Blake, I don't really think it's completely his fault. He's had some bad moments when he's played. I think it's more Glesnes and Elliott falling off a cliff. But if Andre Blake is back to his Jamaican form, I think I think Jamaica will at least have a fight. If they're if he's playing like he is with he is with Philly, this might be a very very ugly game. I want, as you say, Ryan, we want to see Andre Blake. I think if Super Andre can come up with three, four big save that he did against Canada, I think we have a good chance. All we want to do, keep it tight, soak up the pressure, suck in the United States play of them, and hit them on the counter. Mikel Antonio, for God's sake, my brother, please stay on the last center back. I don't want to you coming out where Bobby Reed is at. I don't want you to come in where Cephas is at. I don't want you to come in where Casey Palmer is at. My brother, stay on the last player. We going to give the ball to you on your head. We're going to give it to you at your feet. I want you to bully these United States defenders. They cannot deal with you. They will suck onto you and you're going to demolish them. Please. Stay on the last defender. We want to give you the ball. And the only thing you have to do, you beat one player or two players, you keep the ball in the back of the net. I don't want to see you jivering past four and five. You don't have that anymore in you. Stay on the last man. Over to you. Four cheapers. What do you think? No, listen, you know, I, I basically constructed this um lineup, right? And um, I think it's definitely a strong, strong team. Um, however, if we had some of the players like Leon Bailey and Demaria Gray, it would have been a probably different formation. Or probably the same, but with um different changes, especially Cephas. Um, however, let me let me just point out um Mikel Antonio, right? He played good good in his last um two games. He got two goals in, in over the weekend. Well, basically one because one was chalked off by VAR, right? And I do think if Cephas and um Bobby Reed can really get down the flank and put some good balls in with the runs that Mikel Antonio can make as well as imposing himself physically. I definitely think um he will get a goal in this game. And let me tell you, if the Jamaicans do score first, then we're going to be the United States. I can guarantee you that we're going to be the United States if we score first. The, the momentum will be with us and the team and the energy. I just and I just think the United States will be in a quick response mode where they, where they will be overthinking things. And we have players on the bench who can come on and, and possibly make a difference. And we have players also that you guys don't know about that could really pull a surprise on you guys. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying to the United States is don't don't go in the game too cocky, not too overconfident, and just, you know, be humble and Re let the Jamaicans get the win. Simple. Simple. Respect. We need respect. Yeah. When you cross that line, you don't need to respect us. But respect. And I'm going to tell you something where a lot of Jamaican people don't understand. When we have Leon Bailey, when we have Gray on the field for Jamaica, they don't come back and help the defense. But in this thing, where I'm telling you, man, Jamaica going to be hard to beat. With Cephas coming back and can go forward with him pace, with Bobby Reed coming back and help the wing back and going forward, we have two ways players going back on front. So when we don't have the ball, they're willing to work off the ball because that's the, the mentality, that's the attitude. And key going to this game, our mindset, our mindset, our mentality have to be spot on if we want to get something from this game. But with the likes of Andre Blake, him have to step up, him have to be big for us. And for us to win this tie, I need to see Mikel Antonio have an impact. I need to see Mikel Antonio have an impact. I want to see him score. If he scores for us, we have a 100% possibility to win this game. It's not going to be easy. Guys, we're not going to be here killing Jamaica, praising Jamaica. But guess what? We're going to make our approach. We're going to look at this team. I'm going to ask the United States fans about this team. But we will definitely try to bring up the starting lineup. What he think Bralta should use or what Bralta going to use going into this game against Jamaica. But people, what are you saying about this starting lineup? What said you, um, Ryan? What, what do you think about this lineup? 
Me? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good lineup. Um, I think it's an interesting point you're saying with the fact that your, you know, your wingers will come back and defend um, because that was something that jumps out to me immediately is that, okay, I know Hector and I know Lowe are competent center backs, good defenders, but your two fullbacks, not really a great level. I, I know one was playing, one's a young lad, right? Plays at Wolves. Yeah. Um, and the other, I think, plays yeah, at Charles. Mohamed Salah. He locked on Mohamed Salah. Don't forget that. And he's one of the most big prospects on this Jamaican team. He's now playing in, in, in Scottish Premier League. I think he will be big. Greg Lee with the energy going forward, overlapping. This Jamaican team can be cooking. But go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I mean, it's interesting what you're saying about, you know, the fact that the the wingers will come back and help and help the fullbacks because I think they definitely need that. I think our wingers are some of the best. You know, you're looking at Polisic and, and Tim Way. Um, so they're definitely going to need that. And, and if they get that, that, that'll make things interesting. I mean, it's, it's a good point that you made that the, um, you know, the likes of Damari Gray and, and um, you know, they, they don't come back. So that, that'll make it that'll make it interesting for us, but I I don't know I I still it, it's a good lineup. Um, I just don't see it troubling the U.S. I mean our center backs I think are where we struggle. So Antonio might be able to if we start like a Miles Robinson, he might be able to pull Miles Robinson around the pitch. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the U.S. midfield. I think the U.S. midfield has the quality to overrun that Jamaican midfield. So it'd be hard for you guys to get the ball. Um, but, but the thing is, we don't need the ball. Jamaica don't. We, this is the danger what you're going to find yourself with. We allow you. We want. We don't want the football. We are not good on the football. What we good at is transition, getting the space behind this United States team. And I'm telling you, that is where Canada go wrong. You left yeah. Jamaica. You turn over that ball, and you lower Jamaica team too. They are very good with transition. They will kill you. The more space they give Jamaica behind a fullback and behind a defense, they will take you apart. It no matter the team. The more space Jamaica get, and the more they can be very dangerous. The yeah. only the only thing I can say about that is, I mean, you guys were kind of ripping on the Canadian defense. Um, you know, Miles Robinson's a little bit suspect, but if it's if it comes down to a, a speed game, um, our defense is as pacey as it comes. I mean, you got Anthony Robinson who's got pace for days. Marks every Premier League uh, winger out of the game almost every time he plays. He'll, he'll mark your guys' wingers out, no bother. Um, Chris Richards, he's he's hit and miss, but again, he's a he's a guy that's got a lot of pace. Um, and then even like if it's a Sergino Dest, loads of pace. So if you guys are going with this sort of you know hoof it up to Antonio, let him run onto it on a counter, I just think our guys are just going to be able to defend that because we got the pace to recover. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I don't disagree with you. I think it's going to be tricky. But people down in the comment section, is this the best 11 for Jamaica to face against the United States? People, and let me tell you guys this. I need player going to be good going back and front. This game is about smart, intelligent, working for each other. And I, I, one of the things that I I am looking forward to see what we do without these players that not coming back to help defense. I am really interested to see the likes of CFAS and people. I don't need Jamalo. I need Jamalo coming off the bench for this Jamaican team. CFAS is the perfect player with him speed, pushing the ball. Jamalo is a player who can come off the bench. We need players good going forward and players coming back. Do we how we're going to approach this game? Allow the United States to make the final pass, make their come inside the midfield, and then we trigger the press. Set them up. Set them up in our press. Physical with them. Rough them up. Turn over the ball and hit it. Hit them on the counter. Um, Ryan, I have a question to the Jamaicans because um, for the build-up to this game, midfield has been one of our um, key areas in which we struggle to find players in, especially the defensive area. And against Canada, we did play Damian Lowe in that position. So for the people in the comment section, just um, let me know. What are you guys saying about Damian Lowe in the midfield as a, a possibility? Um, yes or no? Because I know that some people are with it and some people are against it. Um, Ryan from the USA, you, you think Damian in the midfield would make a difference? 
Um, I don't think so. I think Damon Lowe probably would be better served in center back for you guys. Um, I mean, you've got two championship level uh, midfielders in there, right? Um, I, I think I think you're kind of fine with that lineup the way it is. Um, that being said, I, I as I said, I don't think adding Lowe in there is really going to make much of a difference. I mean, the U.S. should boss that part of the field with with the midfield that they can put out there. Okay. okay. I would agree with that. Like if Ethan Pinnock was starting, I would go with Bernard Pinnock center back low in the midfield, but you don't have that opportunity here. So I think as it is, Damian Lowe should play center back. I think he's been better this season at center back than of course, Glesnes and Elliot have been for Philadelphia. I think he's more solid. So I think you might be coming up well out of this. But I think with the situation, I think you have to keep him at center back. You can't move him up. If Pinnock was starting, then I guess you could you could argue, but not right now. My problem with 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 Dushan Bernard at center back people, he, he, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure about Dushan Bernard playing center back. I read Hector. He might have the experience. He might have the height. He know to play in these big game, been there before. I just don't think Dushan Bernard. With, with Dushan Bernard and Lo, one of them prone to make a mistake. Right? I need a level head one mm -hmm. going to take charge of the back. And I think I would bring back Hector in that midfield. In that defensive with Damian Lowe. You need That's someone to be very good at passing out the ball. Dushan Bernard is good, but I don't want to have two. Dushan Bernard and, and Lowe is a little bit similar. And I, I wouldn't want to have two similar center back. I need one who's going to compose on the ball, who's going to calm things down, him height, everything. I feel like I prefer Hector. Yes, sir, Ryan. Um, change um, Hector for putting Hector for um, Bernard. Yes. And people, with, with low, with we missing too many players. No, it's not the time. Let us see how things pan out. People, understand, we know Coach R. Grimson. Stop being naive, people, down in the comment section. Hit the like button. We all know the coach will play. Lottie body here in the CDM. So the coach will not just come and make a bag of change with so many key players missing. Keep it simple, people. Don't overthink it. United States is a totally different midfield from Canada. United States midfield of them is much better than Canada. So, I wouldn't want to see Damian Lowe running out of position in that. Keep Damian Lowe at center back. And keep Lottie Bow there and let us see how it goes. Because we're going to need somebody there to tackle. We're going to need somebody there. We're going to be disciplined and hold them going in their position, people. Ryan, to say something, right? You know what this game reminds me of? United beating Liverpool over the weekend. And the oh. reason why I say it is that United went into this game with a very depleted squad. And Liverpool fans looked at United saying, you know, we're going to beat United, whatever the case is. And look what United did against Liverpool. We got the win. We made substitutions. And, and those subs made a difference. So this game is going to be a game where Jamaica will win and, you know, defeat the United States of America. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, before we get into the prediction, guys, let's go over back to Ryan. We're going to come up with a team for the United States. So I'm going to give you in best 11, in best starting level, and we're going to give him that opportunity. And let's hear him out because we dominate the conversation or we're going to win our team. Let us see the scary United States. <laughs> At um, best 11, but one thing, football don't play on paper. It play on the pitch on the day. But let's listen to the United States. Break it down and tell us that the game not going to be close. Okay. So I'm thinking well, our formation will be a 4-3-3. So if you want to just modify that formula. Yeah, something like that. We'll do a flat 4-3-3 for, for this. Um, 
So in goal, you got to go Matt Turner. Um, he's not had the best time of it at um, Nottingham Forest, but you got to go Matt Turner. Before you go to that, though, you think Andre Blake better than Matt Turner? Definitely. I think yeah. to toss-up, right? I mean, Matt Turner's been a little bit exposed, but it is Premier League level. I mean, Matt Turner was a very good goalie in MLS. Um, so, I mean... Andre Blake, no disrespect to him. I think he's a very good goalie, but it's hard to say him over Turner, to be honest. Yeah, but Jordy Petrovich did about just as well for the Reds, and he's doing better in the Prem than Matt Turner is. So, maybe, you're maybe so. I mean, he, he's also playing for Chelsea, not a Nottingham Forest, who's a relegation team. So, yeah, I mean, but Chelsea's it, trash right now. So they're better than Nottingham Forest, though. Not by much. Uh, they are a good bit better than Nottingham Forest. Let's behave for a little bit. Yeah, let's behave. Well, he's horrible, but okay. All right. So if I was to go left back, it's got to be Anthony Robinson, probably the best left back in the Premier League, either him or Destiny Udagi, but it's got to be Anthony Robinson, um, one of the best players right now going and um, top, top player. Then I'm going to say right back, it's got to be Joe Scally, um, Borussia Mönchengladbach, um, top player as well. You know, he's, he's only young. I think he's 21 years old, but he's done three full years of playing week in, week out in the Bundesliga. Probably do a bigger move eventually as well for himself. Um, with the center backs, this is where it gets a little bit dicey. Um, one of them has to be Chris Richards, I think. You know, Premier League has pace. So it has to be him. Um, now, my uh, pick, Chris Richards is a uh, left-sided center back, right? Uh, he, um, yeah, uh, All right. He's a right side. All right. Yeah. Let me see if I can quickly pull that up. I think he's right-sided. Yeah, I think he is right-sided. Yeah, because uh, Reem is usually our left-sided center back. And that's who I would ideally like, but I don't know because he's not playing at club if that's who they'll go with. Um, I think he might go with Miles Robinson, which would be a mistake, but he does have pace. Um, but I would prefer Tim Ream, but I'm, I'm thinking he'll go with Miles. Yeah. What do you think in Canadian, uh, Ryan? With the way that the Jamaicans want to play it, I'd rather go Miles Robinson. Tim Ream, they're going to bully him. I You'd feel be surprised, like though. Tim Ream, even though he's old, can have moments of pace. And he's, the, you know, he's experienced, permanently proven. But yep. I, I do think I, he'll go with Miles, yeah. yeah. Situation. He's going to get worn down at some point. Like, it, if they go him or Walker, that's not smart. I think Miles Robinson is probably the better decision here. Yeah, so we'll put it, we'll put Miles in for the, uh, for the 11. Uh, that would definitely be, I think, our weak point, if I'm honest. Um, then with midfield, I think, I mean, I think for sure Eunice Moose is a lock. Um, you know, proven player, um, AC Milan, you know, got great engine on him, top player. He's got to be in the midfield. Um, after that. Central, yeah. right? In the central. Um, you could, you could play him. Pro I, you could play him on one of the kind of the, to the side, to be honest, because I think I, I want to have Johnny down the center, to be honest. That's the guy I really would like to see in the team. I don't know if that's, who they'll have, you know, he could, he could go Tyler Adams, but I think Johnny has done a lot recently to deserve that spot. Yeah. But I think Burr if Tyler Adams can go, he's going to have Tyler go. I have That's a bad the, feeling about, I don't think it's a smart decision. I think. They yeah. I, I think against Jamaica where they're, they're going to be, you know, a, a pretty pacey team compared to say what we would see in the final mm -hmm. for playing Mexico, maybe don't have as much pace. I think that's maybe when you use Tyler Adams or that's maybe when you use Gio Reyna is it is in the final. I think in this game, I think it's suited to Johnny's abilities. Um, but you're right. I mean, Burhalter might just pick favorites and go with Tyler Adams um, if he's fit enough. So we'll we'll put Tyler Adams in because I'm hearing you out. I can't see him not picking Tyler Adams, to be honest. I think he'll go with the, the usual Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney and a Musa grouping. Um, the vaunted MMA midfield. I mean, you know, it's worked time and time again. McKinney has gotten a lot better recently with how he, you know, he he does work a lot better. He used to kind of just be a vibes player, you know, oh. didn't. But his work rate's really gone up. So I, 
Oh, yeah. McKinney has to go in there. We'll put him in there in that final spot like, in the midfield. I'm, like the past year, I've been very wild by McKinney. I really have with well, the way he's became tougher and played harder at U of A and for the national team. So I agree Yeah, I mean, that. he's really turned it around, right? He went to Leeds. It was a disaster, but he's come back to the club. He's taken it serious. And he's a top player in Serie A. And as I said, yeah, he, he's, he's learning to really graft on both sides of the ball, not just offense. He plays good defense now. So, I, yeah, that's really got to be the midfield. Um, but, I mean, I would like, love to have Johnny in there, but we kind of know he's going to go with Adams. Um, but left wing, easy pick. It's Polisic. No no bother. Easy pick. Um, you know, top, top player. AC Milan as well. Been getting in amongst the goals this year. Um, he's got double-digit goals on the season across all competitions. He's been getting assists as well. That's, a you know, an AC Milan team that's second in their yep. league. So Perfect hard. league for him, man. Perfect league uh, for him. I have a um, question for you, Ryan, right? Who is better, Pulisic or Leon Bailey? I would have to say ooh, it's, a t it's a tough one, but I would go with Pulisic right now. I know yep. Bailey's doing it in the Premier League, which is a tougher league, but, you know, he, he's got a bit of form. I, I'm, I'm going to go with Pulisic. Okay, okay. If if Pulisic was still at Chelsea, I would go Bailey, hands down. The way Pulisic's playing at AC Milan, and I like to respect Serie A a lot more than a lot of people do. Serie A is my favorite European league. Um, I got to say, I got to go just Pulisic by a hair right now. It's if close. Don't Chelsea, get me wrong. Leon Bailey's a top player, and, and it's close, but... Polistic's doing a, a tremendous thing out there right now. If you're still at Chelsea, though, it would be Leon Bailey hands down. I don't know what it was at Chelsea for Polistic, but it was like he was good for like three months and then he'd fall off the face of the earth. It was it wasn't it wasn't a fun time. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's just one of those things, you know, where you know, sometimes it's just not gonna work at those clubs. Too many different managers. Um, you know, he had a great spell that, you know, obviously the, the vaunted COVID era uh, when he had Lampard and all that. But project that nobody, nobody, streets won't forget Project Restart Police. Yeah, exactly that, you know. Until but, he blew up the quad at the FA Cup final. You know, it's a shame. You know, a lot of our guys have had injury problems. And, you know, well, hopefully this is, you know, hopefully he can stick it out, get a good run. Because this is, yeah, this is the best period of his entire career up yeah. until now. So fair play to him. Um, but yeah, right. I'm going to say right wing, as much as he's been poor at club level, it's got to be Tim Way. He always shows up in a USA jersey. That's why he, hasn't been, he hasn't been doing anything at Juventus um, since his move. He's been poor, don't get me wrong, but always shows up for USA, always does well in that shirt, always looks bright. I mean, who would you guys pick besides Tim Way? Honestly, Brennan Aronson and then play Tim Way or where Joe Scally is, so you could have both. Because I mean, I mean, Allegri wants to play him at wing back. He's been sort of – that was kind of the plan to begin with. So you could play Aronson and then put Weya down at the wing back where Scali is and have both at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, Aronson has been so desperate at club level. I know he's gotten the odd goal there last weekend, but he's been so bad. And I'd be an Aronson fan, and he hasn't really even shown that much in a USA jersey. That's my concern. Tim Way always shows up in a USA jersey, gets goals, gets assists, gets amongst it. Aronson's ghosted sometimes in the USA jersey. If Sargent wasn't hurt, I mean, I, I would argue Sargent and then Balligan up top. But Yeah, it's an interesting shot with Sargent. It's a big miss. Disappointed he's not coming, to be honest, because I think he, he he could be a really top player, and hopefully he gets included in the Copa America squad because um, I, I like – you know, I like Haji Wright, to be honest. I like that he's been brought in. But I think Burhalter probably goes with Pepe as the starting forward. I think as much as he goes back and forth with the two of them, I think he goes with Pepe. Uh, maybe he only plays in 45 minutes and goes with Balogun second half. He's done that sometimes. But I think Pepe I, from the start. I think if the U.S. makes the final, that's where Balogun starts, to be honest. I, I could agree with Pepe starting there. And then Haji Wright plays second half. I could totally see it. Yeah, I mean, he seems to like to do that. Um, it's it's interesting. I don't know if the players like it because it seems like they can't get into any sort of rhythm. Um, but I think the way Pulisic's playing, I think it's set up for Pepe to do well. He's not yeah. playing a whole lot at club level, but when he does play, he does score. I mean, his goals to um, 
goals to minutes ratio is insane. Yeah. So he does get in amongst, I think he got a goal at the weekend as well. So I, I like Pepe in there. He's the more form forward out of the two at Balogun. Yeah. So you're saying the original, right? And this, this team look good? United States? Original Ryan. We we <laughs> you know, say a tree Ryan. We can't call me original Ryan. So you have to say Risa Ryan in the original. No, who, who's the who's the eldest one? Uh, the eldest one is the original one. Let's see. I think. Uh, yeah, how old are you, Ryan? From US. Uh, twenty-seven. Oh yeah, I am the. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Why? When you make me look old, man. When you make me look old upon the stream, man. I am the old. I didn't the, say you looked old. Eh? I didn't say you looked old. I just know you're older. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm 30. I'm 30. I'm 30. Yeah, this United States, as I say, United States on paper, them good. Them good. But I'm telling you, man, just like Orion from USA, biased against him. In, in, in USA team, I have to be a little bit biased. Nothing wrong with bias, you know. Why people think something is wrong with bias? Nothing wrong. You yeah, support the team, you yeah, back your team, and that's how it's supposed to go. I wish some of the people them down in the comment section who support in Jamaica have a little bit of balls about them. Weak minded, them not believe. Can see we just went to the US to 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 to, to Canada. And beat Canada and un, uh, unbeaten all along. How much years at them yard? I only have to about no worried about key players missing. I want to know Jamaican people believe Danny Jed. I want to hear Danny Jed. You have to believe anything you want to achieve first. You have to believe. So me a talk and the players them still on the motel and I listen to the show right now. Yeah, I about all the text me and say all of them people there. I want them have the same energy after the game. Them man not believe. Look for the United States fans come cocky. All when him team no good, he might come cocky said we. Believe Jamaica. A level be level. That's a rap play the ball. They play the football. The ball is round. Anything can happen on the day. Go ahead, Ryan. I think there's a... Uh... We lost him there. Seems like we lost Ryan there. But yeah, Ryan from United States. The fans, them, the man, the man, I believe, man. Again, I think there's a fine line to walk. And personally, I like to call it like I see it, but I mean, I will be biased, but I will also call it like I see it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. What about you, Ryan? Our oh, Jamaican fans, they're saying, ah, oh, that's going to, they're going to beat us at all of them tough there. I mean, look, I mean, we've got a very strong team, but I, I do kind of echo what you guys have been saying throughout. We cannot come in there and be too cocky and kind of look towards that next game. But I think the boys have kind of learned over the over the time. You know, a lot of them, they are kind of young. You know, they're they're all, for the most part, 25 years or younger, but they've got a lot of caps. They've played in a lot of games now. So even though they are young, they're a very experienced team. And I, I think, you know, I don't I don't think they're going to overlook Jamaica. Like I, I think they'll take it serious. That we'll have that confidence to win, but I don't. I don't think that they're going to overlook it. And I think because of that, um, they will get the win, and it will be quite. I wouldn't say routine, but they'll get the job done quite comprehensively. What about you? What about you? Um, four G G persuading. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a quality team. Um, the United States is a team that does score goals. And um, listen, I don't want to sing too much praises for them going into this game. You know what I'm saying? Because we're traveling to Dallas and, you know, I want Jamaica to win this game. And, you know, I have to say that the squad is really depleted to an extent with the likes of Damari Gray and um, Jamar Nichols and um, Leon Bailey not being in the squad. But I feel like not many Jamaicans are respecting the squad or giving it the respect that it still has. You know, we still have the likes of Mikel Antonio, Bobby Reed, who plays in the Premier League, you know, Casey Palmer, who is a good player. Um, Cephas, I know that he's not the most like excellent player, but he brings that pace. He can be an addition to the team. And I don't want to tell you guys about the bench that we have, but you guys will see it if we call up on the bench. We have quality players coming off the bench as well, if needed. So I just feel like Jamaica will win. I just feel like the vibe is there. 
listen, going into the Liverpool game, I felt the confidence. Someone asked me, where did I get this confidence from? I just found the confidence and we won. So with this game, despite the squad being depleted, I have the confidence that we will dismantle the United States of America. And Ryan, don't feel any way for beat you guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So how about a combined 11? This is it. This is the confident when me are talk about as a Jamaican supporter. This is the confident. And and Ryan, not to cut you, but you know what Eric my spirit, the Jamaicans who said because Leon Bailey suspended, them now but I got the game, them them give up but them ticket and all them foolish there. You get me I say, I know man who support, we're supporting the team, so the people them must go the game and support the national team. You cannot go on game because one man not go play. Maybe him not playing will be the difference maker for Jamaica. You might never know. So, you know, the people them disrespect the thing when them say, oh, them give them refund but them ticket because Leon Bailey now go play. The national team will support, will support a one-man thing, you know? Yeah. It's not a one-man thing. It's not a Leon Bailey FC. If a Leon Bailey FC you know, they put, and you go and go support Leon Bailey FC, see Leon Bailey that run up down the hills right there, um, today, him go run at the hill, him there Jamaica, I drink him jelly water. I'm going to drink some jelly water with Leon Bailey, because if I Leon Bailey, if <laughs> you run down, I'm going to drink some jelly water, man. Believe, people, any man that believe, come tomorrow, any man, when I say come with them, look at negativity. One day before the game, just know, say, a dirt you never get. When you must believe, man. I want to do it. Yeah, man, Ryan from United States. Talk to me. We are going to do a combined level with the United States and Jamaica. Let's I go. Mean, this might sound awfully disrespectful because I don't mean to. But... Don't say it, you know. Don't say it. <laughs> don't say it, you know. Don't say it, you know. Don't say it, you know. We are talking about we are doing the best combined level, the best player for both clubs, for both country, best player for both club, best player. Let's go for it. The best player of them in their position. United States, Jamaica, combined level. Andre Blair. Man, we're, we're going after this 23 months, but I just overall. Overall, the best player. All right. Talk to me. United States, talk to me. Ryan, you're going to be the mediator in I building, you know. You are going to be the mediator. No, what well, I know. Andre Blake, start with it, Ryan. Ryan, you do, you ask me because I don't want to get me over by it. So, you are all sitting now. It's over to you, Ryan and the Talk to me. So, for goalkeeper in this combined 11, Matt Turner or Andre Blake? For me, Blake has been the number one goalkeeper in a CONCACAF for over five years. Stegard was in the in the MLS and Andre Blake outshined him. Said we. And one reason why is because he's a USA have a passport USA. That's why I'm playing in, in England right now. And JPEG. What you say? More I hear your, your rebuttal to that. So we're going to move on to American Ryan. What say okay. you? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Andre Blake's been a top goalie. There's no doubt about that. And Matt Turner has been shaky. Um, it depends. I mean, I... I I mean, if you're saying who shows up in the bigger moments, Andre Blake's had a lot of big moments for Jamaica, so no disrespect. I mean, he's 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 had more big moments than than maybe Turner. Although you look at the World Cup, Turner had some great moments against England, um, against Wales. So it's hard for me. It would be very hard for me to pick a guy, no disrespect, that's playing in MLS over a guy that's in the Premier League. It's just difficult to do. I, I can't get my head around it, to be honest. Oh, listen, I, I disagree. I, I definitely disagree. Listen, don't get me wrong. Matt Turner is a good goalkeeper, but nah, I just think Blake, Blake takes the cake. I think majority of American fans, as well as Jamaican fans, would agree that, you know, Blake would, would take that spot as well. Do I pick or I still host? Andre Blake for me, bro. I, I take on, if I'm picking, I'm picking Andre. I'm picking Andre. So that's 3-1. We're going Andre at goal. All right. That's the one thing I'm sure Jamaica's going to get is goal. Everything else might just be the USA. Whoa. All right. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So now we'll go left back. We're going to start with 
since we gave LFC the start, we're going to start with American Ryan, left back. I mean, we can't really argue, Shirley. Anthony Robinson's got to be the left back. That's got to be something we move on pretty quickly from. Um, you know, he, he's the best left back maybe in the Premier League. Um, he's, he's probably, he's, I know he's playing at Fulham, but he's going to be at a top, top club in a moment. I mean, I just don't see any, any way around not picking Robinson. Any uh, dissent, press, LFC? Um, doing good in the Premier League, but I will, I will, I will stick with him twice. Okay, nope. we'll go with Anthony. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Anthony as well. Jedi. Center backs. LFC. You have the floor. center back. Ethan Pinock, the best in the region. All right. American run. Yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, Pinnock's a top player, so for sure. You no, know, absolutely. I, I would take Pinnock over Miles Robinson or or whoever. I mean, Tim Ream on his day, but if we're saying right now, uh, yeah, I'll give you Pinnock. That's fair enough. Press? Yeah, I'll take Pinnock as well. Yeah, I think on I think Pinnock is the right guy for this slot. I think he's honestly better than Miles Robinson right now. Miles Robinson is not as good as he was in Atlanta. He started the season a bit rough with Cincinnati. Doesn't help that they basically got rid of all their offense to play defense or to sol- solidify that defense. Um. Yeah, I would go with Pinnock there. The the second center back. Damn, I I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we should go there. I think second center back for us, Chris Richards definitely got to be in there, Premier League player. Um, maybe if you're being a little bit ambitious, maybe even like a Cameron Carter Vickers. I know he's only playing at Celtic, but again, a very good player. But I would say – it's hard for me because I want to put Tim Ream in here because I think he's, you know, but is he on the decline? He's undoubtedly on the decline. But I think if you're picking a best 11, he's it's almost got to be Tim Ream. I, I think they're all better than Damian Lowe. I'll say that. I like Damian Lowe. I'm not disrespecting, but I think I do think that uh, Richards and Ream are better. I mean, Cameron Carter Vickers, I'll throw this out there. I mean, he played in the World Cup. Um, He's playing in a Celtic team that way. I know it's Celtic and that's not deemed like the super highest level, but he's Cameron Carter Vickers probably a year from now is probably playing at a much bigger club. I know we're we're talking like right now in this moment, but I don't know. I mean, realistically, we're probably picking Chris Richards as that guy right now, but just so much of me wants to say Tim Ream or Carter Vickers, but maybe that's too much nostalgia for the, for the past and maybe too much look into the future, you know? Yeah. That's like trying to say Michael Bradley would fit in this 11. Yeah. yeah that's too much nostalgia. So we're going to Richard, Richards. Yeah, go Richards. <laughs> I, yeah. I think we'll agree with that Richards. So we got an American and Jamaican at center back, right back. I think we all could agree. It's Sergio Dest, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This, this, I mean, right back. I quite like Scally to be fair. I know I know that the American setup they tend to play Dust, but I mean Dust to me has mistakes in him. Um, hasn't, you know, can't seem to catch on at the big clubs, you know, is that PSB? I mean, I like Scally, but I mean Dust see, it has the more experience in terms of like the big games, whether it be CONCACAF or World Cup. The thing about Sergio Dest is he's he's just so fast. Like if he could mature the way he plays, if he could just mentally not make those mistakes, he would be so much – I think it's his mentality that hurts him at times. I don't think it's his uh, ability. It's his mentality that hurts him at times in my book. But when he plays, I mean, if he plays at his best, like argue, I'm not saying he's better than Davies. I would not do that. I couldn't do that. But Sergio Dest, if he plays the way he's supposed to play – He's damn good. He's really good. Now, Joe Scally could end up being better. But right now, I got to go Dest. Fair enough, yeah. Center, All right, me too. center defensive mid. All about the United States. Yeah. So um, we're not, we're not. I mean, center fit. I mean, it's hard to say because Tyler Adams plays that position wonderfully. But if you're saying right now, I mean, he's been injured for what a year. So, um, Luka De La Torre? 
Dilatory. Yeah. Stevenson. Yeah. Hit the like button, people. Come on, people. Stop what they're doing, people. We have over 400 of you guys in the chat. Like up the video, people. Still have 21 of you guys haven't subscribed yet, people. Like up the video. Come on, people. Let's get the video to 400 likes. Earl Stevenson, sam sanitize your hand, brother. I hit the like button. Hit the like button. Come on, people. Let's get back to the discussion. Earl Stevenson, make up yourself, my baller. Go. People, before, before, before you continue, right after this, I have some news for you guys. I'm going to talk about the reggae girls. The reggae girls will be back. Fully on board with the Jamaican Football Federation. So that saga is over. And the next 15 minutes, we're going to start that live stream. So if you're interested and you want to watch that, to hear me have to say about the reggae girls, you can tune in, in after this show. Next 15 minute live. But go ahead. So for me, when it comes to CDM, if we're going to go with a 4-3-3, I don't think Lati Bodier or Daniel Johnson fit in there. Tyler Adams, with his injury, being out so long, it's got to be Luca De La Torre. Luca De La Torre, it sucks that he's hurt, but he's amazing. I think Luca De La Torre, arguably, right now, not just because of the injury, personally, when I watch Luca De La Torre play, I think he's honestly slightly better than Tyler Adams. Oh, I don't know about that. that you're reaching a little bit there. Uh, Luca De La Torre, nice player, but Tyler Adams, when he's fit, is – maybe even the best U.S. player. I mean, he's phenomenal. I think he, our fans actually do him such disrespect with, with some of the shouts that, you know, all these other midfielders are better and that we should be – I mean, I, I really like Johnny, and I think right now we should be playing Johnny given Tyler Adams coming back from injury. But Tyler Adams is one of my first players on the, on the team sheet if he's fully healthy. I mean, he's fantastic. I can see why you want to give Burhalter time. <laughs> so I'm going with the uh, midfield, central midfield. I guess we can put Luca De La Torre. We'll give Canadian Ryan a, a shout. I'm all for it. How, well, how do you spell his name? Luca De La Torre. De La Torre. It's L U C A. L U C A? Yeah. Space De La Torre. Space De. There it is, top one, Celta Vigo. All right. You know, we think, I think you guys should use a four, a four, two, three, one. I think that's the formation we should use. Two CDM, attacking number 10. Yeah, because policies will not get in Bailey over this team. Policies have to play as a number 10. Oh. Bailey. Bailey and them are great on both wing for Jamaica. If this and, was a year ago. And Mikel Antonio up top. No, 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 no. Not, not Mikel Antonio up top, no. Uh, Shama Nicholson. I, Shama I would probably, to be honest, I would probably give Jamaica a forward up top. I, I think um, Antonio or Shamar Nicholson probably are better at the moment than Pepe or... Balogun. Um, I mean, we've not really seen. I know Sargent's having a great run of form, but I, it's hard to to pick over Antonio given like what he does. Still, I mean, Shaman Nichols has been excellent in the Nation League for Jamaica. So it's three scores, five goals, six goals this in this campaign, and it has been excellent. Shaman Nichols up top, I Christian Pulisic. Oh. I think Mark could perform better than Mikel Antonio if we had this 11, so I'm going to go to Mark. Okay. I'm surprised that uh, American Ryan ain't fine for Balogun. I mean, Balogun has not done enough this season. I think he's only got four or five goals. That's not enough for me. Um, so I would be leaning towards Antonio because um, Shamar Nichols does great for the national team, but at club level, he doesn't do too much. Um, yeah, but we're going national team here, so I'll, I'll go for me. I would go with Antonio to be honest. Uh, up top, if you say Balligan haven't done enough, Sham, um, Mikel Antonio not getting this team, Shaman Nichols is the lead, man. yeah. Nichols, we're saying the best player, no, you know, the best player, and Mikel Antonio 
not better than Shaman Nichols at this moment. Shaman Nichols is up top for me. And if we're going to have another CDM, I think that should be Lati Baudier. Lati? No, 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 man. May I put um, McKinney? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we, we, I'm not going to say we don't like Lati Baudier, but I don't think he's good enough. I, I mean, fair enough to put McKinney. No, not in that position. Or, in that uh, CDM. Lati Baudier is a good player, but he's not good. So we're in not going to pivot. We're going six and eight. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're two, 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 six, two, six, two, six. We're going to put the Juventus man inside. So, double pivot McKenny. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I will go with it, but... And then, of course, I think Leon Bailey should be in this 11. I think we all yes. can Leon yep. Bailey. I think at the 10, it should be Gio Reyna. Okay. We're starting to divulge into a little bit of craziness here. I mean, Rain has not played all season. Uh, no, come on, we agree. Who is who, who is who we who put in at the other winger? Is it them or we agree? We have to put um, Polisic on the other wing, yeah, guys. Polisic. Come on, let's, 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 man. Let's, Polisic let's is a player on number ten, man. No, Polisic on the wing, and who then them or we agree, man. I don't look at Polisic as a number ten. Yeah, got to be on the wing. Damari Gray, I guess, Bobby, if we're not going to go... Listen, if, if you guys put Pulisic on the wing, then Bobby Reed has the 10, then. That's fair, I think. So you left it great. Great, you yeah. play the number 10. Uh, Bobby Reed is more, I think, better at the number 10 spot. Personally. Yeah, I mean, the U.S. doesn't really have 10s other than maybe Reyna, but... Again, he's just been so poor. It's hard to really justify. I mean, but he always shows up in the U.S. shirt. He does show up for the U.S. To be fair, and it's hard for me to say that. Even I know D. Cordova Reed probably plays a bit more at the moment, but it's hard for me to say that D. Cordova Reed's a better player than Reina because he's not. Um, See, I mean, I think if Gio Reina was just able to play, like it's not that he can't play; it's that they don't let him play. Mm. It's that he doesn't get a chance at Borussia Dortmund. At Forest, they don't like him. With the USA, it depends on what Burhalter's feeling that day. You know, with of course, with him almost being railroaded by the Reinas, who's to say he doesn't hold that against Gio? Mm. I mean, I know it's also injuries, but I mean, he can also. So, I mean, it's like Gio's in a bad situation always where he goes. Yeah, I mean the, the forest moving to forest was a mistake. It's it's really pushed his career back, to be honest. Um, but it, you're right. If we're picking a ten in Concacaf, it's got it's got to be Reina between USA and Jamaica. It's got it's got to be him, to be honest. Even the fact he's not playing, it's still got to be him. Bro, you know what? I, I as me telling you, policies have to play as a number ten, and they might agree over on that side. That's a perfect ba balance, bro. Policies can play the ten. That would be the perfect balance. I mean, at Chelsea, he was better as a 10. AC Milan, he's better on the wing. I mean, like, I think that's a decent compromise. We can put yeah, Pulisic down compromise. the center, and, and it, it would be a better team anyways, probably. Like, yeah. This was to play. This team would win. This thing would, this thing would win the Euro. <laughs> <laughs> I, have more faith in, I have more faith in Spalletti winning the Euros than this. Uh, and I really don't have faith in Spalletti. So the people in the comment section saying, what are the people in the comment saying, Ryan? Create them and put policy as the number 10. Policy? Yeah, yeah, put policy as the number 10 and put grey on yeah. that. Yeah. But seriously, I mean, I have more faith in Italy winning the Euros than this 11. And I really don't have faith in Italy right now. I mean, they're playing better, but. What do you think, people? What do you say about 11? Look, bad. Good, bad. Good, it's a good team. Not Euro level winning, but it's a good mm. team. You think this team could win the Copa America? Yeah, for sure. I think Euros is a little bit too, uh, what's the word? Um, 
Cloud Cuckoo Lander. We'll go there. Mm. Head in the clouds. There we go. Good solid team. Good solid team. But Peeper, that is a combined lever. We we'll give you guys some good preview on all the games that we don't left you to keep in tune to make you know what is going on and all of them stuff there. So we just want to tell you guys that we really appreciate all of you guys tuning in. Um, you guys can go and check out all of this person. Tell the people where they can find you, Ryan, over the United States. By the way, both of you guys live in the United States, and I can't understand how Ryan and this live in U.S. and supporting everything Canada. Because that's what I chose. <laughs> I was born in... When I, where I was born, I have no uh, major league teams. I could choose what I want. I chose what I wanted. So, where are you born? In the U.S.? I was born in Mississippi. Well, all oh. we have is college teams. I could choose that's, what I that's, that's why the country accent is there, right? Yeah, that's why the country accent's there. Oh. All, we have is, all we have is college teams. Other than that, I could choose what I want. I chose what I want. That's that's the that's the long and short of it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but go ahead, Ryan. Tell the people where they can find you. Um, so yeah, you can find me on YouTube um at Ryan Edward Fortune. That's the channel name. Um, I do uh USA soccer vlogs, so go all all to most of the games, usually the away games, vlog it, show you guys the experience, interview fans. Um, pretty decent, so check that out. Also, the Twitter handle and Instagram handle is one Ryan Fortune. So, give those a follow. And yeah, loved being on, guys. Hopefully, I can be on again. Hopefully, after you know this Nations League win, you know. Man, <laughs> <laughs> something. How do you apply? Do you just get a ticket, or you apply to the federation to get uh, uh, we, uh, the 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 growing level? For the away games, um, it tends to – it's a little bit of a mess when you're trying to get away tickets. Usually the Federation tries to sort us out, but they kind of give very late notice. They'll say, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm talking days before the match. So you just kind of have to book your travel mm-hmm. and, you know, plan Hopefully. on going, and then something kind of comes up. Mm-hmm. So, so you have, have you ever applied to the Federation, the U.S. Soccer Federation, for get a, a media pass? Um, for a media pass with US Soccer, no, I've never done that. Um, I've gotten a media pass like the World Cup and Guitar. If you guys want to check out some of those videos, they're quite good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of my YouTube channel is very much like the fan experience, so it's not really necessarily trying to be media, it's more trying to figure out how it's like for the fans. But maybe in future, you know, I could move on to something more media related. I think you could hack it. <laughs> I mean, U.S. soccer needs more personalities. I mean, it, it, especially people that go to games. I mean, a lot, a lot of people will talk and talk, but they don't, you know, they don't go to games. So I think that's important. I, I will say since Grant Wall passed, I think there's been a big hole in U.S. and CONCACAF coverage. I think it's a very sad thing that we lost Grant Wall. He, he yeah, was, I, I agree with that. Yeah. He was one of the best of what he did. And I don't think we've been – things have been as good since we lost him, to be honest. So, rest in peace to Grant Wall. We miss you. It's sad to see you gone. Yeah, I mean, uh, a legend of the game for sure. So, yeah, it's a big mess. Yeah. We have a caller. Carla, good evening. Welcome to the show. Yeah, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Uh, everything good. And I'm just a call for big up and man. I miss you. Yes, man. Yeah, man. Well, go on, gentlemen. Everything good? Yep. Yes. Yeah, man. Well, just call for um, big up your man. Them. You guys are doing a very good job. Um, it is kind of confusing at first. Three Ryans, you know? But <laughs> it's all good. Hey, um, call her, call her. Ryan, you know the funny thing is? There are three Ryans on the panel, right? And this person on the phone call is a relative of mine with a son by the name of Ryan as well. Can you imagine? It's a very common so, day. Today is a today is a Ryan day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know the most unfortunate thing as well to the original Ryan, that Ryan is a Spurs fan. Imagine. Oh, big him up. What a legend. <laughs> Spurs all the way. <laughs> Come on. 
Yeah, man. But the game on our strength still. Um, you guys doing a very good job, enjoying the show. So keep it up. Big up to 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 this to this show here. Um, the Reggae Boy Show. Big up to the press. Um, uh, with Kishan. Enjoy the shows, and you guys keep it up. And huge fans, you know. Yes, man. No respect, man, Carl. Appreciate it, man. All right, cool. Yeah, man. Take it easy, guys. Right. Blessings, blessings, Bye. blessings. Bless. You know, actually, that's the first time ever on the show we're doing a preview and I haven't get any card. Probably because many of us say, what up the phone line? Because once you warm up the phone line, my goodness, you're here for a long time. People, <laughs> sorry about that. Tomorrow. So, people, just let you guys know, Coach Dacasta in Jamaica. I hope him internet is good. So, Coach Dacasta and a couple coaches from Jamaica will go in in depth on the preview looking at the Jamaica perspective. So we expect to have a big guest tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Remember, show start at 8 p.m. 7 o'clock Jamaican time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So tomorrow, big night, Coach Dacasta, Pep Guardiola coming to share in thought on the game. So yeah. So yeah, football times, so we have to keep it interesting. Yeah. But um Four three press. Tell the people where they can find it, man. Yeah, people, you can find me on YouTube at four three three presser. Talk about you know any pressing issue pertaining to football, as well as our four three three presser on Instagram. So give me a follow and a subscribe subscription. Yes, you hear that, people? Let's do the right thing and don't make the right thing, deal. Yep, do the right thing. So, um. A predicted level for Jamaica. Wow. Wow. This one kind of look a bit surprising. Hector. We'll talk about that tomorrow. All right? Anyway, you as a subscriber, big up to everybody. Big up to all of the people who are tuning in. People, let's get the video 400 likes. Um, we're going to do another stream. The JFF and the Reggae Girls standoff is over. And we're going to get in some discussion on that. So we'll be back live in practically probably a minute. Right? So big up on the cell, people. Let's post that link. You guys can wait for me over there. So that is something great. So let's post it. See if you guys are trouble and stuff. So let's post it down in the comment section. So people, this is the link where you guys can join the show we're going to be live over there people we need 10 more likes come on people people that's the link let's go hit the link people and join us live that's where we're going over there live now to talk about the reggae girls and the jff standoff all right so hit the like button big up on yourself my guess i hopefully we can have you guys back on the show i appreciate all of you guys coming and give me effort two and a half hours 201 20 minutes. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for coming. All right, guys. Uh, good luck. Yeah, yes, luck, man. Listen, blessings. Big up, big up to everybody. People, join me over there. Regular girl stand off. We're going to talk about that. All right, I'm out. Peace out.